What's up, YouTube? I'm Robert, and this is the Biker Bar Podcast live stream. Oh, man, I nailed it. I'm so stoked because last week, I don't know what happened, man. I hit that freaking go live button and boom, forgot what I was supposed to say. <laughs> so here we are. And today's today's guest is from the popular YouTube channel called The Joy of Bike. And it's, you know, the first time I ever saw his channel online, it said The Joy of Bike with Alex, and I hope I get his name right, Boguski. And I'm like, why, why, why does he have his channel named that way? Like, I feel like I should know who he is or something like that. I don't know. So let's find out why his channel is named that way. But before we do, I want to talk to you guys about a couple of things here. So first things is I really love doing this podcast. I, I enjoy it a lot. And apparently there's a group of people that enjoy it as much as me, or maybe yeah, I'd say as much as me. And what they do is they support me and the channel to keep growing. And that's on Patreon. And if you guys have a couple of bucks that you can spare and you want to, you want to be part of that, that'd be great. Cause like you go to a bar, you buy a beer, you give a dude a buck for pouring it. So I come up here, chat for two hours with a bunch of people. And, um, you can throw a buck my way. That'd be pretty easy to do on Patreon. And uh, the people that are in that dollar tier also get access to coupons that I set up with the different um, different companies that I work with. So you can save yourself some money. I guarantee you can sell, save yourself more than $12 it's going to cost you for a year. If you really want to get behind the channel, I have another tier for five bucks. And that is actually, um, that's the sweet spot there. You get stickers. Everybody likes stickers. And then uh, on top of that, yeah, access to um, some longer cut videos. So usually when I'm doing my edits, I'll have like go through all the footage and a three hour ride turns into like 45 minutes of video that then turns into 15 minutes of video. So that 45 minute rough cut, I usually post those. And lately I've also been posting videos that I'm just exclusively making for Patreon. So that's my new thing I'm doing over there. If you want to see it, you got to go check it out. Sign up for Patreon. If you want something for free, go to Instagram. It's free. And so is Facebook. It's free. And there's extra content over there. So it really helps me out. If you um, go follow that stuff, those numbers at the end of the day, they're, they're, they're fun to like show people that are interested in being in the show or interested in sponsoring the show or sending some product for me to be able to talk about. So they don't see those numbers. They're like, dude, you're just some used to be fat guy sitting in your garage with a bunch of beer behind you. <laughs> I make these fat jokes all the time. And now that I've lost a bunch of weight, people look at me funny when I'm in public doing it. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. I can't be like cracking on fat people if I don't look fat. So I'm either going to have to do one thing or the other, you know, get fat again, which sounds really fun or, um, stop the jokes. So I don't know. We'll see which way it plays out. Nonetheless, Let's go ahead and, and uh, bring bring today's guest back on, or on for the first time for you guys. How's it going, Alex? It's going good, man. How, how you right doing? on. Did I, did I do your last name right? I forgot to Yeah, ask. you nailed it, actually. Yeah, oh, you nailed it. You know, that's my one grandma, of those things. My grandmother probably would say Boguski, you know, but oh, yeah. Boguski is what we, yeah, say. What's the, what's the background on that? It's Czech. It's like Slavic. Oh, okay. From Bratislava area. Uh-huh. So Which she I've was like been. the first first to to come to the states, or my my grandparents on my dad's side uh, came here. Oh, yeah, I spent some time in uh, in Bosnia when I was in the military, so I'm familiar mm. with the sort of area over there. It's it's definitely. Um, have you been there? The closest I've been is Yugoslavia. Yeah, yeah. So that's before right. before things fell apart, actually. Yeah, so. yeah. Huh. Kind of kind of yeah. crazy what happened. It was pretty. It was pretty chill. It was pretty awesome, actually. And then. Yeah, then it just went to crazy, crazy, right? <laughs> Lead, yeah, yeah, leaders can do some some terrible stuff, right? Well, that's a heavy subject. Let's just go ahead and talk about. Bikes <laughs> let's instead. talk about that. No, let's talk about bikes. <laughs> yeah, right. So, hey, um, by the way, you mentioned the that you mentioned being fat before, which I which uh, I think is fantastic that you lost uh, all the weight. You know, um, yeah. And if you're feeling good, that's that's super cool. And bikes being a part of that. I was just thinking though, like it seems like you you still think of yourself not as you, but just as a formerly heavy person, right? I think that like I have yo-yoed enough times in my life that I feel like I get like grandfathered into making fun of fat people. Well, you can, <laughs> no, I'm not saying about the making fun. I was just thinking about your psyche. Like you still oh. have this 
like, you, you know, this body image that you, this body you have now is not necessarily like the one that you think of yourself as. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I totally agree with you there to tell you the truth. And it's funny. It's definitely something I'm struggling with where I'm at in the journey right now. And I know that goes away over time, but I guess I feel... but body image is so weird, right? Like, yeah, yeah, Lee and yeah. I were talking about doing an episode on body image. Yeah. yeah. Just because it's like we all struggle with it. I think it's just like there's like more of it than just the body image itself, though, at least for like um, for like part of the stuff that I'm talking about, because like I have at this point done a boatload of rides with, you know, four to five thousand feet of elevation and lots of miles. And I will still like look at my Garmin and see 2000 feet and be like, man okay, you, you're, you're at 2000 feet, you're going to start bonking soon, you know, and it's like, no, dude, no, I'm not, you know, or I'll look at some cl climb and be like, oh, man, I'm definitely gonna have to walk that. And, I, and, and then I'm climbing it. And I'm like, yeah. looking back, and I'm not in the eagle. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't. you know, it, it has to, I think it just takes time, you know, your, your brain is like used to repetition and, and it's not used to change either so I got bad news it's even it's even worse than taking time like you just don't duplicate I was looking at myself in the mirror the other day and I'm like I don't yeah. look that bad you know like but what <laughs> I think of myself is looking like and what I look like yeah. they're not the same yeah and, I yeah. Don't, and that's my my entire life it's been like that it, and it it's not like I've struggled with weight a lot yeah. it's just the two don't mesh it's I was looking yeah. going do I, what the fuck? I look like that. You know, <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. I hear you. I think my, uh, my whole body image is just like, whatever it, it's always screwed up. Like even when, like when I was, like, had a bunch of weight on, I was like, dude, I'm freaking, I'm one of those good looking fat guys, you know? <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Don't yeah, yeah, that. I'm totally confused, Don't man. Like that. overly confident for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, such is life, right? So oh, how did you get into this uh, this YouTube space? Kind of like, uh, I, you haven't been doing the channel very long, have you? No, I think uh, nine months. I think about Yeah, yeah. So in nine months, you're at over 50,000 subscribers. That's, you're killing it. I had no idea what to expect. So, yeah. it, you know, like I, I, I guess I could read about channels that get a million subscribers in nine months and others yeah, but yeah, sure. like you know it's all sort of relative i guess uh -huh. but it's but it's i i just didn't really have expectations for it one way or another so it's it's cool the the best thing about it is the subscribers help you make the right stuff for me oh, yeah you know going into it i didn't know what to make i was just sort of you know shot in the mm -hmm. dark a few things that sort of like well i think i'd like to see that and there doesn't seem to be that and, and made a few things but, mm -hmm. but pretty soon when people are watching, they tell you, well, yeah. make this. <laughs> and yeah. it's, so, it's so much it's so much easier and so much better. Like I did a wall ride show on uh -huh. this like 15 foot wall, right? Uh -huh. And no one wants to see that because <laughs> like you got to, people are like, what's the, where's the little wall? You know? Right. So we just <laughs> yesterday reshot it with it, you know, starting with the small wall to show that it's the same stuff. But oh, uh, yeah. But it's things like that you just don't realize, I think. So, um, so I was, I, yeah, like how how I got going with it. Yeah, like what was the what was the inspiration? You were just sitting around one day. You're like, man, I want to be a YouTuber. No, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> no. Does anybody say yes to that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny question. No, because it's it's so weird, and you get so much you get so much heat about you know it. Oh, you're an influencer. You're a YouTuber, yeah, now, right? Yeah. So it's it's hardly worth it just for that alone. <laughs> uh, but the it's heavy, man. I I was riding uh, three years ago with pretty much my best friend that I spent my whole youth growing up with, and he, uh -huh. he, like he he was the kid with the divorced parents that stayed at our house so much that one time I literally yelled to my parents, but I'm your real son, you know, <laughs> oh, nice. like, so he became my brother and we, you know, we worked together, we lived together, we went to art school together, all these sorts of things. And, and we yeah. rode bikes and I, we, I got him in the, we met at the corner because he had a BMX bike called a stroker and I had one and we didn't believe the other guy had one. This is like 1976, oh, you know, you 1975. And so we, we, uh, 
from then on, we were just pretty much best friends and brothers. And and um, and he, he riding riding downhill, he had a really horrible accident, and he and he broke his neck at C one, C two, and he passed away. You know, while I was holding him. Oh, that and sucks, man. It was. It was. I didn't know this story was going to go that direction. Yeah, I mean, it's. This is just. I, I yeah. was telling you, I was going to tell that if you ask, like, where's this channel come from? Yeah, yeah. It's weird because we try to make beautiful things, but it, but it comes from like one of the most painful things that, probably the most painful experience in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand that. And, uh, and so, I won't go into any more of that. But that happened, and then. Uh -huh. And then we were looking, my wife and I were trying to think of how to honor him because he was a great friend of the families too. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we came up with this idea of building one of these Velo Solution pump tracks. Oh, okay. And, and to, to remember Dave. Bob. Yeah, yeah. And we, we built one and we put it in. And, and we were there one day with another friend of mine, another Dave friend of mine who's a great friend of mine. And, and some and some people were there, a group of people, and it was young people, and it was skaters, and it was bikers, and they and they were all together, and they're having this amazing time. And uh, somehow, uh, I think my friend's like, "Well, this guy paid for this thing, right?" And the woman looks at me. This one woman looks at me, and she just pretty much starts to cry. What? And she's like, "This place has saved my life, you know. Like I come here when I just can't face." anything and I bring my son and he rides his bike and I skate on my skates and and we it was beautiful and you yeah, know, yeah really it was a nice moment and it was exactly what I wanted because Dave and I although bikes in a way took him took him away this is what I struggle with like yeah. you know but they but everything we had came from bikes from racing BMX from, yeah, from yeah. riding together and uh and so I left and, my, and we were driving and my friend's like, dude, you know, you've done some cool things. I did the truth campaign, which was a anti-tobacco campaign, uh, advertising campaign when I was in advertising. There's uh -huh. a, I started a, a bike share thing called B-Cycle. So he's like, you've done some cool things, but that's the coolest damn thing you have ever done. Right. Yeah. And, and so that idea of, of kids and families and, and people making these lifelong friendships on these right. tracks that was it just felt incredible and and the channel is just more debt payment to the bicycle essentially yeah is how yeah, i yeah. think of the channel right like yeah yeah, the, yeah i get it the bike gave me everything yeah right it gave me my friends my career my wife like all these things uh -huh. and so i just i the the channel is well there's here's another way to just give back to the bike and uh -huh. it, and, and there was COVID. So it was like, right. I think it was those two things together, which is like, right. you're stuck in the house, you know? So, uh, so make something. It's crazy how, when you do things in your life that, you know, a lot of times the value that you take out of those accomplishments is never the stuff that you, you were shooting for when you started. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like when I started this channel or my, the biker stuff, like I definitely never expected to like be inspiring people in a, like in a life kind of way, you know, where like people are like, I've gotten emails from people before where they're like, man, I, I'm just going through this horrible divorce and, and watching you laugh riding down the trail. It like keeps me happy every day, it's not the best. you know, or it's like, you know, something like what you just explained or, you yeah. know, somebody else, man, I lost all this weight because you're like, you really inspired me or, you know, I, I met, I met a guy the other day it's on the cool. trip. Like, oh. YouTube is, yeah. YouTube is cool that way because you reach a lot yeah. of people, you know, the, the, yeah. the loudspeakerness of it is really astounding because you get those yeah. stories coming back from people in Singapore or like yeah. not even just in the U S like all over the world. Right. Right. And, uh, yeah, it, it, in in a way, it, this channel was was trying to do that because I think the things that I love about bikes are are yeah. the feelings that you get and the yeah. interpersonal growth and yeah, the yeah. personal and the personal growth and the yeah. things I don't love about bikes is sometimes when it's you know overly challenging, competitive, you know the yeah. uglier side of like relationships or uh -huh. you know like bro culture. Like yeah, those are the yeah. things that, that, that 
in a way, I think I didn't see there, there was some space. It's like, well, no one really talks about the bike as a vehicle to all this other stuff that's way more important than the bike. The bike, is, but literally the vehicle, you know, pun intended, yeah, yeah. to these yeah. other things, yeah. And figuratively, you know, that that's part of the thing that I tell people that like, why I enjoy mountain biking so much. It's not just the, the riding, it's the camaraderie of your, of going out and like tackling this feat and doing it with a, a group of friends and overcoming the obstacles that you, you come to together. Like whether it's, you know, the day that you guys all ran out of water or the day that, you know, you had all these mechanicals and you had to, you know, put somebody's bike together with a stick. You know what I mean? Just yeah. some stupid yeah. stuff that you get through. And it's like, I feel like those things are really where the value is, you know, is like those friendships and, you know, you have, you can't wait for the weekend because you, you know what you're doing. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You're like, yeah. And it's always surprising, right? Like yeah. even if you go into it, just so super sour. Like I, sometimes I'll go into like, we're going to go make a show on blah, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I'm kind of yeah. sour, you know, <laughs> like yeah, I'm yeah. feeling just down or sour, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. by the end of it, people notice we get stoked on the channel. Like we yeah. really get stoked. Like it's, you know, yeah, yeah. it's not put on. By the end of it, I'm just over the moon. And then, you know, you just keep chatting and parking lot yeah. talk. And it just goes on. The sun's going down. You know, you're getting yeah. angry texts from your wife and family. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So you've been a, a, a bike person then since since you were, your childhood? I, I, I rode BMX. And I got uh, good enough that I rode for Factory Robinson. Back in the mm -hmm. day, this is like 1978, 79. So really uh -huh. early race Stu Thompson and people like that, you know, uh -huh. and would do the Schwinn tour. And, but, um, but all I wanted to do is race motorcycles. So, you know, when I saw an opening with a friend who was racing motorcycles and my dad's uh -huh. like, okay, you can't race motocross, but you can race these hair, hair scramble things. Right. Cause and I'm like, Oh, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll just race definitely I'll just race hair scrambles, you know, if you let me get a yeah. motorcycle and got it, you know, got into racing and, and did, did motocross got to be a Florida pro, you know, had a pro card, um, was basically, if you watch supercross on TV, I was good enough to be like one of those guys that would be lapped by the really good guys. That was <laughs> the, the level that I got to. I, I, I was I was lapped by Bob Hanna, which I don't know if you know that name, but motocross legend Bob Hanna uh -huh. literally went by me like, was that the other cars? Like a scene from Ricky Bobby. You know, he went by <laughs> so fast. Uh, I couldn't believe it. That's so I wish I went into motorcycles and I spent a lot of time in motorcycles. I kind of wish that I never stopped with the bike. Like now that I'm older, the bike yeah. just as a, as a, as a, a, a through line has been mm -hmm. more satisfying and, and more important. And I think I would, I'd, I'd be a better rider because everything I realized two years ago, everything I knew about riding a bike, I learned before I was 15, before I yeah. got off a bike, a BMX bike. And so I yeah. bought a BMX bike like two years ago. Because uh -huh. I'm thinking, okay, that thing must be a good teacher. Because I have yeah. not picked up anything in the last 20 years on the mountain bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that you say that. You know, um, I think, I I mean, I, I can't say that it's 100% true in my, in my case as well. But definitely the majority of everything is, is all, all comes from, from them and at that time. And I think that... I was having this conversation with my lady the other day about I'm not a, I'm not good at like teaching people how to ride bike. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is a little bit of what you just said. I learned that when I was really little and and so much of it I don't think about at all. Right. Like there right. is like zero thought process of what's going on there and it's been you know 25 30 years whatever you know 40 years since since I learned it. So it's like, you, you, you can't you like, can't put, I personally can't put myself in that relatable space. You, and, and a lot of really good writers don't make fantastic teachers. Right. Yeah. So I had coaches. That's what I'm sticking with then. <laughs> yeah. Just don't teach like, and I'm sort of, I'm, I'm okay, but not too good, you know, but I know yeah. how to, I, same thing. I, I just ride from feel. And yeah. if I try to unpack it, 
I'll make some mistakes in what's really yeah. happening. I think that that's, that's something that a lot of better writers do. Yeah. And the better they are, the more they've internalized it to the point that it would be very difficult for them to teach it. Now, there's some exceptions. I think Lee is 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 a, a really good writer, but he was he was just outside of like the podium most days on a, mm -hmm. in downhill racing, you know. And so yeah, okay. that desire to try to figure out what was happening made him extremely. He's already analytical, yeah. but made him very analytical about that. And then he started the book project, and that you know required him to unpack it and he's like three volumes of books now mm -hmm. where it started with the 53 point method and now it's down to like there's three things you do on a bike you know yeah so yeah, he's, yeah. he's he's got the confidence to simplify it now but he's but he's got the the genius that comes from kind of being a little bit on the outside and having to uh -huh. figure it out right yeah whenever i whenever i've watched some people like I don't remember who it was. It was like a, a couple of months ago. And I was watching somebody teach how to like bunny hop. And when they explained it, I was like, oh my God, yeah, I do all those things. And like the way that they <laughs> said it, it was like, oh yeah, my toes do curl like that. I never even thought about my feet point this way to like push the bike or whatever. And and, and um, it, it just was a really, it was really amazing to me because like I said, my, I just don't, my brain doesn't operate that way. It's not it's bad. Really like, it's not a bad thing. I mean, it's yeah, a good yeah. because you, you, when you're, when you're learning something, you have to think about it. And so, yeah. you know, we're doing these videos and we're telling people, well, this is how you'll do this. And yeah. they have to think about it. But that kind of writing is stiffer and less flowy and less joyful than the writing that comes later after they put yeah. the reps in and have yeah. the seat time. Then, then the, the front of the brain shuts off. This thing right. doesn't process as fast as this stuff back here, too. Right. right. So, like, if you're in trouble and you're working from up here, <laughs> you know, and things go wrong, you just don't have the speed really to recover. Whereas when it's back here, you're yeah. you, you're just riding on on reflex and instinct. Yeah, yeah. I saw you have that. So you mentioned Lee. That's from Lee Likes Bikes, right? Lee Likes Bikes, who does a lot of the videos with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How did how did you guys end up being friends? Because I've heard of him. Doesn't he do the is like the rip row or something like that? Yeah, like yeah. His... that's actually how we became friends. I was I was at the park. He pulled this contraption out of the back of his truck. He's like, "Hey, do we want it?" And it was a sort of prototype of the rip row. It was a prototype of the rip row. Uh -huh. But it was like a medieval torture device. Like it was frightening. <laughs> like it could kill you, right? right. It was, what it was, this guy it, doing this it was rubber bands connected to a big metal, metal lever. And he's like, you want to try it? I was, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that was our first meeting ever. Just like, and and I think he convinced me to get on it eventually. And I said, what do you plan to do with this thing? Because I, you know, worked in marketing and, and I, um, work in, in investment venture capital so uh and i do you know i taught myself um cad so i can do some engineering rough engineering stuff so i said what do you want to do with this thing and he's like i want to productize it and you know make it a make it a thing and uh -huh. and i said well maybe i could help with that and so i i took i took it back and i started i put the rocker on it i put bolted a rocker on it it was way too skinny and then you know i don't know probably four iterations later it looks like what what you would see as a rip row now oh, and yeah. um and yeah invest a little bit of money in his company and i don't know someday maybe i'll see it back that would be nice right. <laughs> i don't know yeah well that's pretty but cool he's, so but he's, just but for he's, like a local, like bike park or something like that or what's that yeah we met at valmont at the bike park yeah yeah so just just so happened to be living in the same ish neighborhood and yeah yeah. It's and and I yourself. just, I'm, I'm the epitome of the guy who's like, I only ride park. Like when that song came out, like probably 80 people sent it to me because I had <laughs> stopped riding uphill entirely. So oh, it's yeah. all lift service and, and Valmont, which is basically you push up and you do lines and uh -huh. dirt and dirt jumps. And that's all I was doing. And so he does classes out there all the time. Oh, okay. and, and you know, with Lee, what you see is what you get. Like he, really does like we did a we did a workout video and he really does his workout for it's got to be 20 30 minutes before he'll step on the bike and yeah i saw you did your stretch video i was watching that the other day and i was like i always tell myself i'm gonna like do a stretch and then i get to the trail i'm like let's get out of here man he does <laughs> it he i met him this morning on a trail ride and yeah. he was 20 minutes at least in the parking lot stretching 
Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I, I always, can't do it. I can't yeah. do it. I can do a little bit, right? Um, right. But not that much. Not that much. Yeah. I like never, never, he ever. Needs, he needs to though, because he's really, yeah. his shoulders are blown up. He has no cartilage left in his shoulders from, from uh, downhill racing, I guess. And just too wide of bars, wrong body position. Yeah. A lot of the things he's learned, he learned by just destroying himself. There you and go. So, yeah, it's a good teacher. Right? <laughs> That's yeah, why yeah. the BMX bike's such a good teacher because it's just right. harsh. You know, everything yeah, yeah, for sure. is horrible unless you do it perfectly. Oh yeah, yeah. You definitely didn't. You, you if you learn, you learn real quick. Oh, I landed that wrong. You, you know, can't even like, bunny hop a BMX bike without it hurting unless yeah. you do it well, right? Yeah. I remember one of the first like this. There was this jump in back home. It was like, you know, back back then there was no bike parks or anything to, to how go. Old are, how old are you? Dude? I'm 44. So. 44, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so like what we would do is we, I mean, we rode BMX and it was like you rode all over town. You know, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, next people's backyard and there's a jump or that jumps the alleyway, which was, you know, right. essentially like a tabletop, you know, or yeah. then it would be like. Oh, and then you go downtown and right right along this this business's fence there's one that jumps over the bridge and you got to get your friends to stand out there and make sure there's no cars coming mm. because otherwise you can't hit it you know and yeah and uh that's kind of how I, I grew up like riding all over you know and sometimes you're riding through the woods on dirt on a bmx bike and sometimes you're riding on the street but it was kind of like that's where we rode all over the place and yeah I think what I was getting at is I remember hitting this one jump that that one where you had to have the the people stop the traffic or make sure the traffic wasn't coming, and I remember you you would be up like I don't know eight feet in the air or something like that you, you know like you break down to flat yeah yeah and I remember coming down and, and like losing the pedal and just like coming down with one foot all on the back of your heel and you know, we wore Vans that's all we wore back then so like yeah. Cool barely rubber under your foot and i remember just like that was a lesson learned that day it was like man i'm not screwing up my feet on my pedals ever again yeah. you know <laughs> like like they're gonna be stuck whatever i need to do to you know and so that's just funny and, and i think that's what like that kind of riding though is also what really quickly like turned like me into into a mountain biker as well like whenever the person that my mom was dating this guy bought bought a mount they bought me a mountain bike from like Montgomery Wards. And so then riding in the dirt in the in the woods, like specifically, it wasn't really too much different except for now I had gears. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of having to push up whatever hills that we got to, it was like, oh, I can change gears. We can go up that. Cool. You know, and uh I mean, you know, those bikes back in the nineties, they, those mountain bikes, I mean, they're fully rigid They They weren't, there was, it was a road bike with bigger knobby tires on it. I mean, kind of, you yeah, know, pretty much. And, uh, I mean, we didn't even have, I remember, I guess you would say whatever first, the, the, the originate original dropper was like this spring that you could put on your, your seat post. Oh, I had those. Yeah. On your, yeah, you could reach so back and undo was, the, yeah. the quick release and just sit down and then close it. And, you know, like that, that, uh, so we didn't have all the stuff that we have now and oh bikes and, have gotten so good especially in the last like six years i feel like they've really dialed the suspension and the geometry oh, yeah and, yeah it's it's interesting I, I um was having a conversation the other day and you know i i don't know if it's just getting older or whatever you, you look at a bike for sale online and it's like oh it's 2010 you're like oh yeah that wasn't that long ago and then you like think about it for a second and you're like oh that's 11 years old like for me for bike. me Anything newer than when I graduated high school. So anything 1981 or newer, I'm like, that's a new car. Why is it so cheap? <laughs> and I, car. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you think about it and you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's a really old bike. Cause like you said, the geometry and the way that bikes have changed in the last few years, I used to be a big, big, like proponent of like, go out, buy a used bike, an old one, save yourself a bunch of money. And, you know, and, and now it's like, don't Man, get anything prior you. to 2015, pretty much. Yeah. I just told a guy this, I think, day before yesterday, like, kind of 2015, don't go before that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and now the big brands have got their, you know, their stuff together enough to offer things at at a really decent price. I mean, you, you can mm -hmm. get a $1,500 full suspension. I think that stance from Giant, it might even be less than 1500 bucks. Really? Well, a and, lot of that is the pressure from the mail order, 
brands right. that came out. You know, that put a lot of downward price pressure and you saw specialized respond and the big bikes, yeah. the, the ones that could respond. Yeah. 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 And so, I mean, you, you see stuff like that and it's hard to tell somebody to go buy a uh, $1,000 used bike that, mm -hmm. you know, six years old when they could get a brand new bike that may not have like the same quality of components, but the geometry and everything's so different that, you know what, fix the components when you break them. Like that's yeah. what I always tell people. And yeah. all this, all this stuff's going to break. Everything on there is going to break. It's all going to, you want to hear something interesting is like my friends that have really <laughs> expensive com componentry, like the XDR stuff, like, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff breaks more than the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like and it just, it, it sort of makes sense. It's lighter weight and that's why yeah. it's more expensive, but it's also lighter and it's weaker because it's lighter. And so, yeah, you know, that mid range stuff is so good now. and so yeah. bulletproof. I definitely feel the same way. I don't like, I don't geek out on, on, I used to have XTR on all my bikes, right? I don't, yeah. I don't have any high end, really high end stuff on any of my bikes. And, and I like to buy mid range bikes now. Yeah. Which is still a lot of money these days, but, but mid range yeah. is kind of where I, yeah. where I shoot. Yeah. I I'm still buying, I mean, I guess the bikes that I'm building are cause I'm more building my bikes now, you know, where it's like, Oh, get a new frame. And I got this. Well, you're going to spend a lot of money. If you build like, there's no way you're getting away cheaper. Oh yeah. It building. feels like it's cheaper though. You're like, Oh, I only spent 500 bucks on this, but then if you yeah. add it all up, you look, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, oh shit, that didn't save any money there. <laughs> no, no, you will never save money building up your own bike. That's a, yeah, yeah, not gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, I don't but mind buying a used bike though either. There's a lot of guys out there that are, um, you know, they're getting some kind of bro deal, or they get they know somebody or whatever, and they're you know they're getting a bike for probably fifty percent of cost, and then they ride it for six months and sell it, and it looks brand new, and yeah, and I'm in for that. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll pay you. You just what got you rid of a hardtail. I saw you're selling your your Santa Cruz Chameleon, which it's I gone. Had, it's gone. It's gone, man. That was yeah. a sweet bike. People are always the biggest comment that we get is like, "Yeah, but what about on a hardtail?" Right? Like, yeah. like, like hardtails can't ride anything, and and it gets frustrating because like hardtails rock. They yeah, rock everything. Now. Well, they're, they're just. I mean. All I rode for 10 years were hardtail 29er single speeds. You know, yeah. like hardtails are are amazing. I just got the common saw hardtail. Yeah. And I love that geometry. And and I I was with Lee, former downhiller, uh -huh. and I forgot my shoes. I put crocs on instead <laughs> of not riding. And yeah. then when we just ripped down, and I was just like staying right on his wheel when we got down. He had two PRs on Strava on the oh, downhill nice. sections. So like you don't need, I mean, suspension bikes, I love them, but, but yeah. again, it's like, it's never about the gear. You know, if, yeah. if people would sweat like their reps or put as much time into, in, into focused practice yeah, as they yeah. do into like this tire or this frame or this geometry or this suspension tune, it's like, come on. Like, you, if you ride this well, and mm -hmm. then you just dial everything perfectly, you ride this well. Yeah. If you ride this well and you put in a bunch of time on new skills, you ride this well. Yeah. It's. I just think people get a little wrong-headed about what they sweat. But it's also because it's easier, right? Yeah. My buddy who is a power lifter, he's like, you know what I like about this sport is – you cannot, I don't care how much money you have, you are not going to be, you're strong. You can't make yourself strong for a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, got to put in the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you definitely do. I saw this girl this morning. I'm driving. I actually took, tried to take a picture of her. But when you're in Boulder and you see someone, it was, it was pouring rain and hail, 39 degrees. Right. Mm -hmm. And she had been caught out in it. And she like traffic was going slow because there was so much standing water. And she's blasting through on this road bike. She's uh -huh. kitted in a Team USA kit. And like right. when you're in Team USA gear in Boulder, you got it the regular way where you're on Team USA or you right, won right. a national championship. Right. right, right like you right. cannot wear stars and stripes around here and go to a yeah. coffee shop. You'd be blown out. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so. I just, I, I looked at him like, that is how you get a national championship, right? Yeah, the dedication, yeah. because 
the only way she wasn't going to get hypothermia is if she was just going to pound out 800 watts yeah. for the next, <laughs> you know, until she got home. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure. Incredible. It's so cool. Yeah, what you were saying there about the hardtail a minute ago, um, I had told people this all the time with mine, where it's like one of my local downhill runs that, you know, I kind of use to judge how good I'm riding. My my PR on my hardtail was the same as my my full squish bike yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. And even now, it's still like my full suspension bike is like 10 seconds faster. Mm -hmm. I mean, 10 seconds over how long almost yeah. three miles you, you yeah. know what i mean so it's yeah. like that's not that's not much time at all you know right. right so uh those things are super fun and i think the other thing that people forget is you have a lot of suspension in your legs well that's it you have so much you have the majority of the suspensions already in your legs yeah and and yeah. everything about how you move the bike over shapes is in your body bike relationship so yeah the you know what's left for just suspension to take care of it's definitely worth it it's it's and it's and they're really good now there was a time where like coming from motocross i was like well bike suspension is not really suspension it's a joke yeah. it's there's there's rubber bumpers in there bro like <laughs> none of this is real it, you know that don't you you know and <laughs> but but now it's all real i mean it's, yeah, it's yeah. extremely sophisticated and it's really good so uh but yeah, so much thing, you can you can make all that with a hardtail, and and yeah. uh, people act like, oh, I can't do this because I got a hardtail, or I can't do this. Yes, you can. You can yeah, do you all can. of it. Yeah. Well, and I think the biggest key, though, too, the biggest key component to having a hardtail and ripping on it, in my opinion, is having a dropper. Like um, when I first got mine, my chameleon, I, I did a ride without it, with it exactly how it came off the floor, and I bought mm -hmm. the the bottom of the line aluminum version just to see like if if i bought this bike and went out and rode what would i what would i change immediately mm -hmm. and there was two things it was oh my god i can't handle riding this with no dropper because it's just like you want your seat in that climbing position but that climbing position seat seat height is absolutely wrong for everything else you, you know. can do it. You can do it. You see the, like the, the very best cross country racers yeah. are able to, they have a high hinge. That's so good that they're able to pass the, the yeah. seat through and everything. I mean, most of them have droppers now, but some yeah. of them um, don't, or they just leave it high because it's faster. It's doable. And we used to do it, but I love a dropper. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, love, yeah. I like to pedal uphill with the dropper because I'm such a BMX. I just want my knees up high. <laughs> it's just oh, yeah. you feel you feel hooligan anytime you get your seat all the way down. Don't you feel like a little <laughs> bit more like a kid? Yeah, I love that I do feeling. remember, you know, riding without a dropper back in the day. And yeah, I mean, you had this sweet spot that you would have your seat at and that kind of made made everything OK. But I feel like on the hardtail at least for me in the, in the times when I was, you know, where I'm just smashing rocks and stuff like that, having that seat, I have a 200 mil the, dropper the, on my bike. The seats, the seats at your chest. If you have yeah, no yeah. dropper, the seats at your chest, your belly button, yeah. your chest. Yeah. It's, yeah, and, it's, and now, yeah. it's not always like, like back when we were the way the geometry used to be, it used to be a lot of like, get back really far. And now it's like, get low. You know, you want to get back, but you kind of want to get low too, you know? Mm, I mean, there's a high hinge and a low, there's a high hinge and a low hinge. Yeah. And I think like when you have a really good high hinge, like the, the, the elite cross country racers all do mm -hmm. that, you know, their, their hinge and, and their attack position is so dialed that mm -hmm. they can pass that seat right through. And it is coming through this area. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make the shapes, not because you're getting back on the bike, you're, you're centered on the bike. It yeah. just appears as though you're back on the bike because being centered on the bike when the bike's at this angle makes it look right. like you're back on the bike, but you're centered on the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what kind of bike are you riding now? I have, I just got that common saw hardtail. So yeah. um, I had a, I had a Santa, uh, a Santa Cruz chameleon that, that so I swapped out the frame uh -huh. and um, just cause I like the geometry of the yeah. my friend had that common saw it's pretty harsh i gotta say mm -hmm. it's a pretty harsh frame but but the geometry is so good on it it just yeah. rips how much and how i much love supporting the common fork? saw what's that how much suspension do you have in the fork i think it's one i think i have 160 on there i i, I swap oh, wow. i pulled it yeah 
It's got a lot of suspension. Yeah, so you don't need suspension in the rear if you have 160. Right. Yeah. Then yeah. I have a I have a, a a Canyon Strive, like a bit of an older Strive, 27.5. Uh -huh. And I've got a, I have two of everything because my son, you know, rides with me a lot. So like if oh, there's nice. any category of bike, I'll wind up with two of those. Yeah, so I yeah. also have a, um, uh, uh, YT Capra. Uh -huh. Um, I just ordered a couple of those Revel Rascals. Oh yeah. That we're going to build up on the show and I got a, I, we, we're doing a lot on sizing and bikes have gotten really long and, 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 more troubling is just the size charts are really right. fucked. Yeah. Pardon my French. Like they're oh, not you can say whatever you want, man. Accurate. Okay. <laughs> the size charts are crazy. And so I've always been a medium and I'm looking at my, you know, the reach on some of these bikes and I'm like, and I'm trying them and yeah. I can't ride a medium in some of these bikes now. They're just, yeah. you know, and I can't, and I know what size bike I like and it's not, it's not the geometry. I dig the geometry. It's just too long. So, yeah. so I ordered a small of the rascal and a medium of the rascal. I'm going to build them both up and build them both up to my rad, which is a uh, um, way that we measure bikes. And, and um, yeah. one will have a little bit more, uh, uh, a little less, uh, less uh, sh shallower rad angle. And the other mm -hmm. one will have a flatter rad angle. Cause what's the, the uh, what's the ship and, time on those? Are they, they, are they out pretty far? I got mine been? right when I ordered them. I don't remember. It was probably like three months ago. Oh, so, okay. But I only ordered frames. Yeah. And getting parts has been a nightmare. Yeah, as yeah. everyone knows. I mean, it's not a... And I was talking to a buddy at SRAM. He said 2023 is when he thinks things will be back to normal. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I bought that uh that GX Axis for my Bronson. Mm. And um, then I, I sold my chameleon and part of it uh part of the the build as well so i needed a i need a drivetrain for the new bike and i was like oh i'm gonna go get another one of those and no i'm not no <laughs> like so it looks like everything's sold out for a while and it, it's like you know you, you got it, it'd be like buying a new car with no tires you know it's like just sitting there in the garage you can't do anything with I it. i wound up being able to score one set of wheels so i think to test the bikes i'll probably just move the wheels across the bikes because i can't find another set of wheels and oh, i don't yeah. want to put a different set on because i'm trying to make them identical so yeah, I yeah, only right i won't i only want to like review the size i don't want to review the wheels yeah yeah. yeah yeah that's always tough with me when i'm when i'm riding you know different bikes it's it's there's so many questions that come to mind. It's, I feel like you really have to put some time on them, you know, because mm -hmm. otherwise you're like, well, was I stronger on that lap or was I faster on that lap? Because now I've ridden it three times a day or, you know, like there's so many other variables and I, and in my yeah. head, it's like, so I do, like that. Do you do, do you do reviews? Cause I haven't done any reviews. I don't think I really want to do reviews. I'm um, not really a review too much. person. If I did reviews, I would want to do them like a fine wine and just yeah. use like insane vocabulary and maybe sit with Lee and have a pipe or something <laughs> and review different yeah, right. bikes. Um, right. You'd have to do something different. But it is, yeah, it's, it's, diff like it's difficult to review. And all the bikes are so good. I mean, the, the reality yeah. is like if you get a bike in your size from any of the major manufacturers and most of the smaller ones, they're awesome. Yeah. They got it figured out yeah. now. Do you prefer your your uh, your frames to be a little smaller than I don't know how how tall are you? I'm five nine exactly. I used to five be nine, taller. So, I okay, used to so think I used nine. to think I was taller. I'm not sure, but yeah. yeah, I am. I think from my childhood of riding BMX a lot, I tend to pick a frame that's not that's smaller. I I, I usually ride a large, and I'm six two, and mm -hmm. a lot of bike companies will tell me to ride an extra large. And well, every what time, they tell you, what they tell you is marketing. I mean, I come out yeah. of marketing, and it's marketing. And I've I've had we've had enough conversations behind the scenes. You know, the they don't they don't want to be just on this all like long and low thing right now. And but they but they can't get off of it. And the mm -hmm. and the same thing with a lot of the shops. They're like, if I tell a guy what size he really should be on, he's going to walk across the street. And wait for some, you know, somebody to tell him something different. What do you yeah. want? Like, there's you know, people five eight coming in and like, I need a large. It's like, oh brother, like yeah. you are not going to be able to. And that's sad for me because what I want is I want people to love this sport and yeah. get 
everything out of it. And when things are way too big, big is cool, right? So yeah. I think there's this, you know, but but when you're a racer and you're changing, like I was talking with LA Jackson, and they're all changing sizes and they'll change sizes from one race to another race because they've got, you know, a truck full of free bikes. Right. Okay. Um, for those, but they're not, they're not doing like what, what I think is happening to consumers where you're walking out of a store with a bike that's, uh, you know, 90 millimeters too long for you. You will never be able to size it back down so yeah. that it will fit you. Yeah. Um, and, and you're not Elliot Jackson strong, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't need the advantage of being able to like pull the bars and optimize that, that pull strength. He can get by with, with a different, with a longer ride. I'll tell you every time in my life that I've tried to go to an XL just because it like, I'll, I'll, every once in a while I'll get this thing in my head where I'm like, well, maybe I'll like that better. Maybe I'm just, you know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I need to, yeah. I, I need to try just that. So it, I, yeah. And that's not, so that's not a bad idea to just check. I did it once in the past where like I had this bike and I, I went out and I bought this, I bought the same, same bike in an extra large, switched all my parts on it and sold the, uh, sold the, the large and was like, all right, now I got an extra large. Didn't cost me anything. And, um, I didn't like it. I had it for a while and it was like, I just couldn't get used to it. And this is the exact, the exact same thing that happened with the chameleon. So I had the aluminum one. I freaking loved riding that bike, but I wanted the carbon because I rode my mm. buddy's carbon bike and I was like, man, this thing is not flexing at all. Like, yeah, this is amazing. I, 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 I want this. Yeah. And when I got to the shop, they were like, what size do you want? And I'm like, maybe I should get an extra large. Maybe <laughs> I should, I, you know, I'm thinking yeah. to myself, I'm like, it'll be a little longer. So it'll be a little more stable. Well, we're guys, down. we're guys. Like, right? I don't want to be in a small, I'm about to ride a small. I don't, right? Like that's a big blow to the ego. You yeah. Know? Well, in my head, I was thinking, oh, it'd be a little longer, so it'd be more stable on the downhill, blah, 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 yeah, you know, yeah. and, and um, I, that's, I, I, I will be honest with you. I don't think I would have sold that bike if it was a large. See, like, that's what, when you just started to tell that story, I was like, that's why I sold it. That, yeah, like, it yeah. clicked for me. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. The last thing that I did was I went out and I bought a new set of handlebars and uh, a shorter stem and I pushed my seat forward to try to make up for that difference. Yeah. Of, Cause it's only like, like, I don't know, 30 or 40 millimeters long. But, where, but where you're sitting doesn't matter. It's where, yeah, you're, exactly. it's where your weight is on your feet yeah. to, to your reach, right. Yeah. To the bar. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's what matters. I tried to re-engineer it and it just didn't feel right, man. It yeah. was like, you know what? I I got on the bike. I went, I hadn't been on it for a while. I don't remember why. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe I was just riding a lot of stuff that was in a lot of places that wasn't good on the, on the hardtail or something. But mm -hmm. I remember I got on it or did this ride with my buddy and I finished the ride and I was like, that's it. Like, I'm going to take it home, wash it. That's, that was it. And I had been on the fence with that bike for probably the last six months of selling it. Cause I loved it so much, but. Well, I had the medium and the medium was long for me. I, you know, to yeah. get it, to get it to, I couldn't really get it to quite fit. And that's the yeah. other reason why the common saw was a 420 reach. And, and I think that in medium, the, the chameleon is a 440 reach, which, mm -hmm. which should be my size, but my arms are kind of long. And then uh -huh. everyone cramps on that. It's like, well, if your arms are long now, can I have a bigger bike? It's like, no, your arms are long you might have a little bit smaller bike. So yeah. um, anyway, when you hit that, when you hit that sweet spot, bikes feel amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I was really surprised. I bought a downhill bike for Whistler and I thought, man, this bike is gotta be big. Right. When yeah. we were measuring bikes, we were measuring yeah, everything, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. that bike was the exact same, exact same size as my dirt jumper. And, yeah. and when I take the downhill bike out to dirt jumps or slope or whatever, it just feels like it has so much pop more mm -hmm. than my enduro bike. And my enduro bikes about, you know, this much longer and I about can feel, yeah, yeah, I can feel a difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, it, it, it's, Oh, I forgot. This is a podcast too. Like I got to Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I hold up my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. try to cover for you. I know earlier you were doing the uh, this and this level, and I was like, ah, I don't feel like uh, uh, they can deal with it. They'll figure it out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no worries. Um, I think that it, you know, that those little things that they tweak on bikes are 
it's like it, it's like magic to me. I, I mean, obviously, engineers they know what each one of those you know move this bolt three millimeters and it'll make the bike do this. You know, mm -hmm. they they understand that, and I don't. And yeah. um, but I do understand when I get on a bike and when it feels amazing. And mm -hmm. and and I think that that's I'll like that's that sweet spot. I've often thought that that was be, that that it was suspension at times yeah. when it was sizing. That's, yeah, it could be anything. That's what I've learned is is that there's there's bikes I'll be like this bike's just kind of dead, and then and then if I really dug into it, it just didn't really fit. Yeah, you know? the first time that I rode my Chameleon, I remember having it on the trail and being like, "Man, I just spent all this money on this bike. I don't really like it." Such like, I, I, and I and I was like, "I mean, I'm." something's not right here. I should like, I know I should be liking this bike. And it ended up being, I rolled the handlebars like back, like a quarter an inch. Mm -hmm. And I was in love with it. It was yeah, like, oh, then it cool. was dry. And then it was like doing everything I wanted it to do. But it was like yeah. just those handlebars being in the wrong spot. Like it just well, made that, everything feel wrong. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Well that, I mean, you could probably, you could probably move things 20 millimeters, just rolling the bars. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you made it 20 millimeters smaller. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I'm valid again, you know? And it was like, okay, yeah, yeah. let's party. You know? <laughs> so, and th that's the thing where, you know, for me, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. I, I just can't explain why that feels bad, you know? And like my lady recently, she's like, I want to go get my, my, bike size to me because I don't feel like something's right. And I'm like, well, are you uncomfortable somewhere? You know, I, I don't know exactly how to articulate to her when I get on, I'm like, Oh, my stem, stem needs to be shorter. Like, yeah. she's like, how do you know your stem needs to be shorter? I'm like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. You know? <laughs> like, and I don't know how to explain right. And I, I think people that do that, it, it's um very well, interesting. There's, there's two theories of sizing, right? You've got still the legacy sort of like start with you sitting on the seat, road bike mm -hmm. sizing, right? Which I think of yeah. that is like a, a legacy fit theory that right. it matters if you're, it, it, you know, if you're a cross country racer and stuff, you probably can size that way. But for mm -hmm. you and probably most of the people that are really just kind of pedal uphill so that you can turn downhill and take advantage yeah. of like this new geometry and kind of right. this new, new mountain bike sport. Right. Uh, that's sitting like if you if if you go to a shop and they start sizing you and they start with you sitting on the seat, don't bother with like run. I would run <laughs> out of the store, you know, yeah. and then I try to figure out like what what size bike I need and some other means, because that is not going to work for. Yeah. Shredders. Yeah. It's tough, though, you know, as a person who's trying to get into the sport, how do they know what to buy? You know, and they're really at the the mercy of you know whoever the salesperson is of yeah. the place that they walk into. Yeah, you know, and some of them are great, but so I don't know what your experience is with like. <laughs> but, uh, I refuse to play the game though, um, where where you go into a shop and you feel like you have to bring your resume, right? <laughs> You're like. Cause, cause the guy's like, well, you know, what do you, what are you looking for? Like, uh, they look at you and then look down and they're like, like, uh, like a hybrid might be good for you or, uh, right. like, what, are you, where, what are you in the market for? You know, right, like right. instantly they're saying and like, dude, I shred, I want, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and then you go, well, I started in BMX and I went on to moto and, you yeah, know, yeah. and you start laying yeah. there and, and I was in Whistler, you know, like just dropping all this stuff to try to get them to, like at least show you the right bikes. Right, I will right. not. I will not play that anymore. I'll just be the just a dumbass. And for, I mean, it's not so bad now because I know what I want. Right, so right. I could, I could order, I could order online and avoid that whole thing. But it's uh -huh. horrible. And then think about it for a guy. Now multiply it by ten for most women. What right. they experience when they go into a shop. Right, right. right. I don't know what the fix is for that, but it yeah. needs to be better. Well, I mean, my lady's bike is, I mean, I built it. So, I mean, I built what I would want. Right. So hopefully that's right for her, but <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, this would yeah. rip for me, you know? <laughs> I used to build my wife's bikes and I would always oversize her because I was like, you know, if my bike's broken, I could probably ride it. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I would go a little big, which now shouldn't ride anymore. Probably I was, ter I was a terrible person. <laughs> To ride Fortunately, with. the the lady and I are both we both ride the same size bikes. Oh, but, that's uh, cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. No. And that's always my thing too. Oh, I could always ride her bike. Yeah. But right now she has this seat that she just loves and it is like, is not pretty. I can't stand that seat. <laughs> it definitely doesn't look like if I had that bike out, the only way I would ride it is if I took the seat off. Right. Yeah. So, get one of those, get, go on, go on Amazon and get one of those gel things that you just sort of like drawstring on. You slap it over and hold the drawstring. It's like it's it's a woman specific seat, and it just has that like you're too much man. on a cruiser too look much, to it or something. You know, you're saying you're, saying you're too much man for a woman. Yeah, specific yeah. Seat. And this is the thing, though. I want to ride that bike so bad. It is such a sweet bike. Every time she has a fifty ten. Every time yeah. I pick it up, I'm like, oh, my God, this thing is so light. But the only way that I would ride it is if I took that seat off and put a regular seat on it. Are and I'm women so lazy. Sit, are women's sit bones, they're wider than men's? I, I think, think they're so, wider, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So it sort but of I'm makes just, sense why it wouldn't I just don't want to. I just don't want to see it. I just don't like. Oh, I don't want to be seen okay. with the seat. <laughs> it, okay. And yeah. I'm so lazy that I won't take the seat off and switch it just to ride it. Like, so that's like the barrier of entry. Like she knows I'll never borrow her bike now. I think that's probably the reason she keeps that seat. I, I don't know how many years, years ago, probably, probably like 20 years ago, there was a company that was maybe the first to make women's seats called Terry. That's they the made seat still, company of the bike. That's the okay. seat that she has. Okay. I have the opposite experience, you know, so I'm going to unman my, I'm going to have to give up my card. I, my wife had one of these and I liked it so much that I got one for my bike. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. So I have female like sit bones, birth and birth and sit bones. Birth and hips. There you yeah. go. I, I, I have pretty wide hip sit bones as well. Um, however, I think it's just the look of the seat. Like oh, it's they're, like, yeah, they're horrible. It just yeah. doesn't look, it doesn't look bro enough for me. No. I mean, I have pink decals on my bike. I have yeah. like pink shirts that I wear all the time. You know, like people make fun of me on the channel. Oh, look, looking really uh, yeah. feminine there, Robert. I, I, no fucks given, dude, but that seat is where I draw a line. Those, <laughs> those, those seats look like the equivalent of like orthopedic shoes, like nursing yes. shoes or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's exactly like that. I think the only but thing- they're wonderful. Wearing, they're wonderful. And so are, nor you know, so are orthopedic shoes. They feel yeah, great. Right? <laughs> I think once the wireless dropper technology finally gets there, that uh or like they the, they have them long enough for me yeah. then if her bike had a wireless dropper on it then i could just whoop, take it off slide mine in we'd oh, be good yeah. to go yeah but sram doesn't make a 200 millimeter on their wireless dropper yet so until the they whole, do that the whole, the whole double rail seat situation is the is is like a holdover from like 1890, you know, like it, everything about the bike's been modernized except for that inner that the way the seat integrates and attaches to the to the driver. I feel like there should be a very simple way to take your seat on and off. And the way that it is, I feel like I feel okay. like personally, there's a I, I think that there's there's a market for something to be engineered there. there like, there's I don't a, understand why you can't have some kind of quick release lever that you can yeah. open up pop it off, smooth it, especially now where a lot of these droppers, like you need to put air in the dropper under the seat. Mm -hmm. And it is such a pain in the ass. I hate it. Every time you, your seat starts creaking, you're like, okay, I know I need to take it apart and put grease on it, but God knows I'm never going to get it back to the sweet spot for like at least another two weeks. It's you know, not, like, it's, Yeah. It's not a good standard. The two rail thing is there's got to be a better way. I agree. With you, you can like mark the seat, like the, like, like do a little scratch in the metal and be like, okay, I'm going to get it exactly right at this angle. And no, something is like, there's like, it, it never goes back to the right place until you've ridden it for, you know, two weeks and you carry a, an Allen key in your pocket and you're like, okay, now it's finally right again. You do you think know? people, you think people would be stoked about a new seat standard or they just like would scream and yell? Like I could imagine a little, a lot of, a lot of screaming and yelling. Yeah. I think the people that'd be yelling would be the ones that are just happy about the seat they have. Yeah, a lot of guys like I. One of my buddies I was talking to yesterday or the day before. He's he's like every bike I get, I just move my seat because I love this seat. This is the only seat I like. I really seat I've ever tried. I hate it. You know, like remember how yeah. mad mad people were? I don't know if you're into biking, but people were so mad about twenty niners as a concept, oh, as a yeah. wheel size, like just angry, mad yeah. about twenty seven five. Like they just get mad about every new standard. I am um, I I couldn't except the 29er for quite some time. And it didn't have, for me, every time I rode one, I just felt like it picked the line more than I did. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't like that. 
I just felt like I loved that nimbleness of the 26. And I felt like I understood like the, the reasons that you would do a bigger wheel and that was appealing to me. So I wanted to enjoy them. I just couldn't when I got on them. Especially and your size. Huh? Especially your size, you know. Yeah, like, and the 27.5, though, I really like the 27.5. You get that rollover. It. It. It's still nimble. It's still, and I feel like there's probably something secret with the mullet thing that's kind of going to really come across well. Probably good. Probably yeah. good. The I 29ers just think- now, they, they are actually, they're better than what they used to be where I don't get on them and, and feel that way as much. But I still kind of feel that when you're in that real like tight, chunky tech kind of stuff, they they like to plow, man. And they don't always like it's maybe it's I have to get used to riding a 29ers because it's a different style of riding, possibly. But for me, I like that twitchiness still that I and I just don't quite always feel like I have it on a 29er. I, I mean, you're not wrong. I just don't. I just don't get into wheel size arguments. Like they're all yeah. good for different things. You yeah, know? yeah. Totally. So, like I love. I I ride everything from twenties. I even have a twenty four. Uh, yeah, know, I, I like all wheel th- sizes. And essentially, they get smoother and more stable on one end, and they're and they're more powerful and 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 quicker on the other end. And you just yeah. depending on what you're riding, you pick what's what's yeah. appropriate. Yeah, I rode my my chameleon with 29ers for a while and and definitely anything that was an XC type trail, yeah, that that tire, that wheel size was amazing. Like mm-hmm. I loved it. I was mm-hmm. like, this thing just rockets, man. You just feel good in the corners and like this is fun. I just want to uh, ride plus size tires on my hardtail, like the you know, three O's and then Crocs. Like I think yeah. that's gonna be my like go-to yeah. setup. Yeah. Those Crocs were way better than I thought. Like at the beginning of the ride, I'm like, I I might not even ride today. And by the end, I was literally thinking if I get a little bit of a tighter pair, you know, I think that I, I might ride regularly in Crocs. There you go. That's how good they start a movement. Well, yeah. Or just be, there's that guy, you know, That's the Croc like guy. It. There's that guy that rides in Crocs. Right. What a Croc. <laughs> They're pretty good. Again, it's like, you just, you know, you, you, the gear, the gear doesn't matter as much as just getting stuff you know, getting your own riding together, basically. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, there that at the end of the day, I I always tell people not don't don't ever judge a rider by what what they're wearing or what they're riding because you'll be humbled. You know, you you'll you'll end up being humbled. I, I've seen guys that were way bigger than me at my biggest size and riding bikes that were old as hell and and um, just just demolishing me on the trail when I thought I was super fit, you know, and, and, um, or you'll see some, you know, dude, like sneakers and, you know, jeans and you're like, Oh, who's this dude? Next thing you know, you're like, wow. Okay. Just sit down and shut up, dude. You know, like, and so sometimes some of that's engineered, like my, my, uh, my, my friend, um, the other Dave friend, when we Uh were, when we were riding a lot of road in Miami, he had um, in Colorado, he lived here for a while and he was time trial state champion in some age group, right? I think cat three mm-hmm. state champion, which is yeah. like, you got to be pretty fast. And I think he yeah. placed eighth in including pros in, in, that, in, the, in, the, in the state championship. So this uh-huh. guy, we go out on a road ride and he has a cruiser, a beach cruiser, but he's pumped up the tires to 100 psi. It happens to be like this really cool aluminum cruiser, and he's got a giant chain ring on it. It's a single speed. Right. Um, he he wears we he has the clip in Shimano um, uh, sandals and and uh, and and camo uh, camo shorts, a wallet chain hanging out, a t shirt, yeah. baseball cap backwards, and I right. tow him into the Pro Peloton in on Key Biscayne. And then take a turn on the front and then slingshot him around and he breaks off the front and Cervello after Cervello is trying to chase this guy down and they have no <laughs> idea what, what they're dealing with. Like this whole thing was planned for like a week just to make people really sad yeah, and, yeah. and see how many Cervellos would like go into the Craigslist the next day. Right. Anyway, he went <laughs> off the front and was never caught. It was beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a good time. I love that you guys uh, put the time into into thinking it out and doing it as well. <laughs> Big punk, yeah. Right, right. That was what I, I rode, uh, or I have a single speed road bike that I bought just for commuting to work, and it's a pretty much a pretty popular section of of bike path that I would be riding on, and that was always the highlight of my day was passing some geared guy, you mm -hmm. know, when when I have one gear. Yeah. Then, yeah. And then you just watch them and, you know, you got the little mirror, you know, you're just watching them in the little mirror and you're like, just watching them back there, just putting the heat on as much as yeah. they can. And you're just, you know? everyone's acting so cool. Like nothing's going on, but right? like, you know, there's this massive interplay between the yeah. two. Of you. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Cause I've definitely, you know, I, and I don't ride a lot of road, but whenever I would, you know, it, it's a lot of times, maybe sometimes you're not super motivated and you see some guy that's, you know, half a mile out in front of you and you're like, I'm going to pass him. Yeah. You know, and that's what gets you going. Got and it's rabbit, not rabbit out there. Chase it yeah. Down. And that's it. So then, you know, I uh, as well have had rides where I was just, you know, tooling along and somebody, somebody, somebody must've saw me a half a mile back, you know, and yeah. they passed me. And then as soon as they passed me, it's like, oh no, we didn't. You know, like, yeah. like, all right. We've all, know. we've all been on both sides of it. Right. And right. Like, right. Right. My friend uh, used to put, he's like, listen, road rides are about pain. And when it comes to pain, it's better to serve it than to, to than to eat it. Right. And it's like, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it, but you're yeah. going to do both. You're going to do both. Yeah. If you do it long enough. Sometimes they'll come cooking by fast enough. You're like, no, nah, I ain't trying. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a no go. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I always have this internal uh, dialogue with myself too. You know, whenever you're, you're like way into the end of your ride, you're like, well, that guy doesn't know, you know, I, I, I rode, you know, 300 miles already this week. So uh, my legs are tired. <laughs> yeah. I have the opposite. I think like if I pass somebody, I'm, I'm like, well, they may, you know, that may be the end of the ride. I like, I'll give yeah. a bunch of excuses to them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it takes away from me. That's funny. So you, um, had a pretty successful career well before this whole YouTube thing, right? Yeah, I did. I did advertising and, and uh, let's see, started with an agency. I think I was employee, it was this 21st employee at uh -huh. this shop. And then they fired, lost a client, you know, fired a bunch yeah. of people. And I was 16, eventually became a partner there. And we grew it to over a thousand people in offices all over the world. So that was a, uh, that was a good career, but, yeah. um, yeah, gave that, gave that up and kind of just, you know, my kids were still young enough. I thought, well, you know, I can, I can kind of, uh, retire here for a while and stop working. I, then I got into investing and advising and, uh, mm -hmm. and I, um, got into a company called Lyft, um, when it was called Zimride before it was called Lyft. I was like, mm -hmm. I went there there were five employees there the first time I visited them and we put together an Ikea table. So like, really uh -huh. early days for, for them. And, and, uh, that made me think I was good at investing, which I don't know if I am, but it, yeah. <laughs> like, it was like, man, you're good at this. Look at you pick, pick them. But yeah, I, I think you're the first person I've had on the show that has a wiki page. So you, you get, it. okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, I, I just checked while we were talking. I was like, maybe Seth has one, um, from Seth by cats. Oh, no, I no, Seth, I looked, from, he, Seth from Miami. Well, he should have one. Yeah, he should have. Somebody should. Be, I don't know. I, I thought you could do like, Anybody can just go on there and write a page, right? Um, I don't know if it's anybody, but some people can. Maybe someone's listening yeah. right now and then go right. like fire up a page for Seth. That would be pretty yeah. neat. Somebody should yeah. write up. I was I was trying to think. I was like, man, what does it take to be a wiki page writer? Like if I just have to go through a little bit of an authentication process, then I can write my own wiki page. And then people <laughs> will think I'm better and bigger than I am. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Still that fake it till you make it kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like the fake magazine covers that people used to make, right? Like, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I've been on the cover of Time Magazine. I was man of the year. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. right? So I don't know. So, anyways, like that—that's that's pretty impressive. And then you, you're you're um, deciding to do this channel, and where do you think that? Like, do you think some of that? the success that you had had in the past is like driving the way that you run the channel or you think the channel is just like this. It's very different, you know, like, mm -hmm. like what I, 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 uh, what I did in advertising was someone would present you with something like that they wanted to sell. And then you would mm -hmm. try to figure out how to make it cool. Right. right. Um, 
And I think it contents a different, different animal. I think some of what I know, I know from sitting in a lot of edit bays and doing a lot of ed editing. And so I can, you know, I can cut. Okay. I had to relearn all the programs. My son taught me how to use the programs and help me with a lot of the early edits and mm -hmm. now I'm okay. You know, I don't try to do fancy things, so it's fine for, for yeah. the story storytelling that I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. The more you do it, the better you get, right? So Yeah. I mean, for me, yeah. the 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 I'm not a technical person. I'm not super technical with my bike. Like my friends will joke that like, you know, I'll hit a line and then I'll check my tire and I've got 13 PSI PSI in my tires. Like, um, and I'm the same way with with gear. I'm just not that on top of it. And so I'll, you know, shoot something and then like just recently the audio was completely just clipped right yeah, and much. and it's just frustrating yeah. um to learn kind of the same things over and over and i want to put out good product that's the that's the main thing with the, yeah. with the channel is good product that shows just some of the some of the for older older riders who are dealing with different things than younger riders there's not a lot of content out there tailored to them um, yeah so, no. so so building that kind of stuff and being in service that's the other thing that that I, you know, when you're making content, there's two kinds. There's entertaining content, right? There's sort of mm -hmm. two ways in. One is through right. entertainment and the other one's through service. Right. And service is what I want to do. Um, yeah. And you can have entertaining elements, but I'm not trying to be an entertainer. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to just be of service yeah. in an area that, you know, hopefully we can we can find some some need there, right? Yeah. yeah. I think I shoot for the entertainment one. <laughs> it's harder. The entertainment one's harder. I think the bar is much higher to yeah. you know, just be, just be, a, you know, someone people just want to hang out with. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I know from, from experience, I'm not that. So I have to. Yeah. It's polarizing though, too. I mean, I know there's people that love my channel because my sense of humor. And then there's plenty of people that, you know, they're, they're in that 32nd tier of, people that click on my video and like, Nope. <laughs> Do you get comments that like angry or mean or like comments? I think they, uh, this is the thing I do, but my sense of humor doesn't read them the way that they want them to be perceived. Yeah. So like, I feel like I've probably had some people say some pretty nasty stuff to me and I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> but so often, I, often I think people do mean it funny. Like sometimes, uh, you know, I'll do, yeah. I'm a little bit the opposite. Like my feelings are easily hurt and I'll read something like kind of sad yeah. and then I'll try to keep reading it. And then sometimes they'll, they'll be the pause where they can yeah. tell that they sort of fired something out there. And, yeah. and then I'll see another comment come under it or an edit yeah. and they're yeah. like, but I love your show, man. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so that makes me realize that, and I knew that from advertising that the people it's like us, you know, we, you're going to play rough, right? You're going to yeah. play rough when, when you're hanging with your friends. And, and I yeah. think if people feel familiar, they might, they might play a little rough and, and yeah, yeah, that definitely happens. Play. Yeah. I've noticed that because sometimes I'll, I'll, um, I'll fire back with something kind of funny and, and then they'll realize, Oh, maybe I, maybe that didn't come across the way that I meant. And then they'll follow up like what you said. Yeah. But for the most part, I, I mean, you, I feel like you don't put yourself on the internet if you don't expect those things to happen. Like there's trolls out there. There's people that are not going to maybe think through what they're saying or they, yeah. their, their intention is something different than the way that you could read it because of the mood that you're in that day or whatever. So I kind of take, I, I don't really put a lot of, um, weight into that, into the, that part of it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think it's one of those things is like, focus on the part that you like and um, just ignore the rest. And maybe that's, maybe that's a dumb way to go about it. I, I don't know, man. Well, I, don't, I, I don't think you'd be able to keep going, you know, yeah. I mean, like for, for like the positive comments are the fuel that keep yeah. you in another show. I, at yeah, least for right. me, they are like, like if I had no comments, or if I had only negative yeah. comments, I guarantee you, I already would be done. Like, yeah, definitely. And, yeah. And, and, you know, I didn't really think about it in that aspect either. Like if YouTube had zero comments, if yeah. there was not, no comments on YouTube, I, I don't know if it would be as appealing. You know, if, if they originally came out and it was like, you get a thumbs up and a thumbs down and that's yeah. it. Yeah. 
No, I love, the, I love the comments. We yeah. still are small enough, you know, with the 56,000 subs, like I try to answer any yeah. question, you know, yeah. and, 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 uh, and just, you know, thumbs up and give it a like and stuff yeah. and, and just go through all that stuff. And I know some point that might not be possible. Yeah. It's sort of getting to the breaking point now, maybe a little bit. Yeah. But I'm trying I was wondering to where it was. I know I've heard um, Seth talk about that in a interview or, or something in the past where he said, you know, when you're like five, 10,000, something like the size of my channel is like really easy. You know, almost all the people that are commenting, they're pretty regular commenters. Like you kind of have a, almost a, a friendship with these people at that level. Great. Yeah. But you, you get to a certain point and there's so many comments and so many people that, that you can't even do that anymore. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and you could tell that the way that he explained it, that it was, you know, it was kind of sad. And mm -hmm. um, it's kind of one of those things where you want the success, but on the other hand, sometimes you don't always pay attention to what's going on right in front always of you. Always enjoy it, man. It's the salad yeah. days, you know, when, yeah. when you really can have those interactions. I think that it's, it is definitely something you will miss. And I guarantee you he's, sad there's probably ways where he's able to interact with people yeah. and still yeah. get that feeling yeah. but it may not be the comments anymore yeah yeah it's, it's something different i remember when he first started patreon that's what he had said it was like oh well here's a way that i can have a group of people yeah that i'll actually be able to like communicate with like like that you yeah. know and uh but and it seems yeah. like it seems like like i'm just starting to see some people who are who will answer for me like yeah Parts of the community, people in the community that have been with the channel long enough, they kind of get what we're doing and and yeah, how we're yeah. thinking. And they'll like help out people about sizing or you know yeah. bar width or something like that. And that's yeah. really cool when I see that. That's rad that the community is like coming coming yeah. together as well. You yeah. know, you were saying about targeting the old, older people, and I think that it, it's it's a great idea, and, it, and it's obviously working well. I. It, your your thumbnail that was something like how to how to do x trick over 40 i think is what what it was is something yeah. like you know manual or something like that and i was okay. like that i saw it like three or four times and finally it was like okay well i'm interested like the over 40 thing was like why is he saying, why does that matter you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. It, it i think it's code for you don't want to get mangled so, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people in their 20s. I see the demo. I see who who watches. And right. and, and uh, for whatever reason, you've decided that you just don't want to get mangled through your right. learning process anymore. Right. And, and so, yeah, it's an arbitrary number. And sometimes, you know, people get upset about the number, too. I've seen yeah. I've got, you get pushback like, well, you know, well, what's the difference between this, you know, when you're over 40? And it's like mostly up here, like physically, yeah. there won't be a difference. But right. there may be a there may be a big difference up here in how you approach this obstacle between yeah. you know now and and being twenty one. Yeah, I think you know the the biggest thing is um, the fear. I of say it up here. Hurt. This is a blog. I forgot. Yeah. This is a podcast. Yeah. I, I think people head. get that. I think I get it. Yeah. <laughs> There's somebody listening. Like, no, I didn't get it. Thanks for explaining. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you know it's the. I think it's definitely the. Um, not necessarily the fear of getting hurt itself, but for me, it's the fear of not being able to do the things that I want to do because I got hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I'm not afraid of this rocky shoot and falling down in the pain of like breaking my arm. I'm afraid of the two months that I'm not going to be able to ride my bike because of that. I don't even and have that, that. Like for me, know? for me, the way the trauma shows up and my trauma is like, it's, it's, it's pretty mixed up, right? So my own crashes are mixed mm -hmm. with crashes of friends. I had a friend, yeah. friend break a hip this year. I've been, you know, and I was there, took him to the same clinic that I took my friend that passed away to, yeah. you know, like, so this stuff is mixed up and balled up. And yeah. sometimes I can't tell what's me and what's somebody else. Cause it really uh -huh. is all trauma. And, uh -huh. and it's not fear. It's literally, it's, it's much more just, I'm stopped. Mm -hmm. So, so, so my brain just won't allow me to do a thing I want to do. Like it's yeah. just full shutdown. It doesn't even get to like, well, I might crash. I might be hurt. Yeah. I might, 
It's not even that. It's just locking up the system so I'm uh -huh. not able to send a thing that I know I can send. Yeah. That's where, that's where it shows up for me. But it's different for everybody. You know, we're, we're, we're thinking about doing a show on, on uh, Friday Fails mm -hmm. um, because people just consume these Friday Fails and there actually is a, uh, a documented phenomenon. It's called vicarious trauma. And, yeah. and you, can, you can be traumatized just by watching video. But you're much more likely to be traumatized by video if you've actually experienced trauma that related to the video you're watching. Yeah. So, yeah. as a mountain biker, if you're just flipping through fr Friday f fails, man, I try to avoid them. And yeah. uh, and I think there's a lot of clinical evidence that, like, yeah, you should if you if you value how well you ride, yeah, you try to cut that stuff out of your media diet. There's like part of me that agrees with you a hundred percent and then there's another part of me that just loves somebody freaking smashing their face into the ground and it's it it just it funny to watch yeah. you know i get it i get it i could i i have both parts too i have both yeah, parts yeah. too but yeah, i think like, i think that i just value i value also i've just had too much trauma and the, you yeah. know i've had a lot of just stuff go sideways yeah. so you know it still comes through like Right. Oh, Alex will love this. He's got a mountain biking channel and someone sends me just a horrendous crash. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, right. And it shows up and like before you, you, you can even throw your phone away, it's like in your head. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my new thing is I have to watch like 10 images of really beautiful writing to try to clear that out. Oh, and there you go. Like try to there find go. something really nice. Everybody knows I'm afraid of heights and I can't tell you how many times I've got that freaking video of those guys riding mountain bike on this like 13 inch trail on the side of this cliff. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. probably seen the video before. Yeah. It's like, I, it looks like it's like Singapore or something like that. I don't even know where it is, but it's like this tiny little trail and this guy's just riding like it doesn't even like no fucks given at all. You know? And I'm like, oh my God, every time I see it just gives me anxiety. I'm like, everybody always sends me that. I don't need to see that That's one. pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and is it going to make you better? Like, it's definitely not going to make you better. I was doing yeah. research into this, this vicarious trauma stuff, and I came across these two researchers who uh -huh. their job is to help people with trauma. Uh -huh. and, and they work together. Both of them were so traumatized by the movie Jaws that neither of them um, go go into the ocean to this day. It's their job to help other people get over things, and they <laughs> haven't been able to help themselves get yeah. over this one movie. That's funny. There's a lot of people that that movie affected. Oh, yeah. A whole I mean, generation. It, I, yeah, surf, yeah. I surf, and I already was like a kid in the water, and I was like, the first thing I heard about it was my cousin saying, Hey, uh, I just saw this movie. It's awesome. You know, oh, uh, uh, no, it wasn't that. It was like, hey, let's go to the beach. And he said, no, I don't, I'm not going to the beach anymore. And I'm like, why? And he said, I saw this movie. It's called Jaws. And for me, instantly, I'm like, well, I'm never seeing that movie. Like, whatever right. he's got from that movie, I don't want that. Yeah, right. Um, but you can't, like, in pop culture, you can't help but get a little bit of that movie comes through every now and then. Yeah, yeah. I was attacked by a, well, attacked i was charged i guess by a by a tiger shark oh, in shoot. in hawaii a couple yeah. summers ago and it was very much like the movie the movie's good it's yeah. accurate you know like i the the thing came up out i could see the eyeballs and the head and everything coming <laughs> at me it was it was this is the end what did you do i was on a paddle board so uh -huh. It started from so far away. It was probably like when I saw the fin break the water the, at first, it was probably 25 yards away. Right. And I'm like, and I'm like uh, dolphin, tarpon? And there's no tarpon in Hawaii. I was just going through a list of things. That yeah, came. yeah. I know how your brain goes, right? Yeah. Or whale? No. And then it's like shark. And then the 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 dorsal fin's out. Then the, then the tail is out. It's swimming at me so fast, right, that the uh -huh. tail is out. By the time it gets to pretty much where I am, I've decided I'm going to try to hit it in the face with the paddle and right. then we're both going to be in the water and we'll just see what happens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is I what it is. At that point. I can maybe get one shot in on this. Right. Thing. Enough to make him think, nah, I don't want to eat this dude. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And so, and so at about, at about 12 feet away from the board, 
Uh -huh. I was like this, you know, uh -huh. and maybe he got a look at the gun show and it was a little too much for him. I don't know. I like to think so. I was just proud that I didn't curl up on the board because that was my other option. It's like, what if I curl up on the board in a ball and just cry, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. And so I chose, I chose to defend myself, which so I was proud of that. It took a 90 degree, you know, huge splash. It uh -huh. was, it was the head was starting to come up out of the water. So uh -huh. I could see the eyes and, and the head. And these things need like tires and right. Yeah, they, they don't care. They, they don't, don't care. care. Yeah. And 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 uh I it turned, I turned, I caught a wave, I surfed the wave all the way into the beach and ran off the front of the board onto the sand, pulled the board out by the leash because I didn't want to get in the water. And uh and it was dusk, you know, it was like kind of the time when you do get attacked by sharks. And yeah. And the next day I said to the lifeguards, I was like, Hey, just, you know, heads up. I, I got charged by this, this shark tiger. And, uh, and they're like, how big was it? And I'm like, okay, I recreated it in my yard with boards. And it was, uh -huh. I, it was, it was, it was at least 10 feet. And he's like, yeah, there's been a 12 foot tiger. that has been coming in. Yeah. Um, and so that's what it was. There so I go. have a t-shirt to commemorate it. Cause the Hawaiians are like, that's really good. That's, that's good energy. You know, it's yeah. good didn't feel that great but <laughs> <laughs> they definitely look at it different. he chose to let you live man you, you yeah. like god blessed yeah. yeah they were like it was it's a good thing i went back in the water the next day that uh, that whole night i was kind of wondering whether i would yeah. but it's funny that i could be charged by an actual shark you know yeah. and i've had other small shark encounters but this was for real this thing was like coming to take it you know take a real yeah, yeah. taste yeah. and and uh and that has and i'm still in the water but people who saw Jaws are not in the water. And that's how yeah. powerful video can be. Right. So this notion of, of being traumatized by, you know, a lot of Friday fails. There's also a visualization aspect that's part of it. So to do a thing, you have to be able to visualize it. If your head is full of visuals that you've seen, right, yeah. of things going wrong, it's a little bit harder to visualize the right thing. And you really yeah. don't want that other stuff in your head. Like say you're doing a drop for the first time or something. Yeah. You really want all the pretty stuff in your head. Yeah. And you know, like what you're, what you're explaining there is something that, you know, I, I do subconsciously, I guess you could say there, there's this trail that I've been riding a lot lately. There's a section, this little waterfall section just terrified me, just mm -hmm. terrified me. And what did I do? I watched my friends do it for like a month over and over and over again That's i watched good. them just nail it pin it i'd take pictures video for them and it was watching them not do all the things that my brain said was going to happen to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that made me be able to roll up on it and be like okay i can do this mm -hmm. and and then it's been good until last week or a week before and i flipped over at the top <laughs> man almost went over the bars <laughs> the same thing the same thing the same spot. So I, yeah. I like, it was one of those elegant flip over the bar. Not like that, like that. Like I haven't seen one of those. So a front, so a full front flip is what you mean. Yeah. It was like one of those things, like, I'm sure you've had this happen where you, you know, you're going over the bars, you get your feet off, your feet are on the ground, they're planted, but your handlebars are keeping your legs from making you able to step forward. Mm -hmm. So you kind of fall because you can't, okay. move, like yeah. you can't, you know, so yeah. it was kind of like an eloquent, eloquent, like slow motion kind of, get it flipped over the bike flew over the side and i end up sitting on top of this rock that's like there's a great view there because you know obviously it's super steep it's on the side of this hill yeah so like i'm sitting there on the rock kind of getting my head together my bike's laying in the bushes and the next guy up rolls up he's like dude just stop take a break and i'm like no nah, but Not exactly <laughs> need to get my head back together and i couldn't do it that day i know i need to go i haven't been back up there since um just out of circumstance not because mm -hmm. i'm afraid but uh, I know I need to go ride it because otherwise that's going to just creep. But I know that's, I know coming into that, that's going to be on my mind until that's you know, going to be rough. You know, you got to, yeah. yeah, you got to get those other, when you're visualizing it, yeah. see if you can visualize just yeah. the good version over yeah, yeah. and over. And if you can, you're good to go. If you can't, yeah. you're, you're really not like I had a guy yeah. ask me, he's like, all I can, I want to hit this thing, but all I can imagine is, the, um, this over the bars thing. And I said, yeah. do exactly what you, you did. I said, just go sit next to this thing and watch people do it well yeah. and get a new, uh, visual image. I think the thing that I use that I do and, and I know what I'll be telling myself 
is a situation like this. The thing that, you know, I'm scared of is getting hurt probably. Right. Mm -hmm. So that accident should, if anything, make me feel a little more comfortable. Like, look, you messed mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. you flipped over and you didn't even bleed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're okay. Yeah. So what are you afraid of, man? Like you right. didn't fall over and smash your teeth out. You didn't like break your arm. You didn't, your buddies didn't have to get you like helicopter come pick you up it's data you got good yeah, you data know. you got good solid data yeah. on you know what happens when it goes wrong i did that yeah. yesterday i hit a there's a we're redoing the wall ride video like i said and and there's a there's a pretty big um four-way on the way and um and i and i was it was kind of windy and i hadn't done it in a while and you know because it's been like a lot of snow and the season's sort of opening up mm -hmm. so i hit it and i couldn't have hit it worse you know i hit it yeah. with like my, I couldn't put a pedal in because one foot was like sort of on top of the crank. And so yeah. I didn't have enough speed and I, you know, yanked up and just, it was just ugly and, and, <laughs> came, went up, wrong. and came up wrong, and wrong. came up short and, and it was fine. And, and same thing. I'm like, well, I can't do it worse than that. Yeah, right? Right. <laughs> like that's about the worst I got. So yeah, go? yeah. Yeah. So you said you were in, in motorcycles for a long time. And Not too long, bike. from about fifteen to uh, fifteen to twenty-one. Uh huh. And then you got back into riding again, like bikes. At that point, from that point, I got into windsurfing because I didn't want any competitive. So I windsurfed, a, you know, for for years. And then uh -huh. at some point in the nineties, I got a mountain bike and got mm -hmm. back into bikes that way. And uh, and had a couple. Uh, I was reunited with with MX a few times in that, uh, uh, um, and and had uh, was was racing enduros and and moto just you know as a as an older guy, mm -hmm. um, and just going out to track days and stuff a lot um, before I moved to Colorado. But in Colorado, I just really you know I got exposed to like the lift service stuff from my friend Dave, and and uh, I'm like this is like super cross, but it's in the mountains it's basically a ski resort you wow. can talk to each other while you're doing it so this how long how long ago thing was ever. It? the that would have been like 20 probably like 2014 okay so you would say around that time is kind of when you rekindled your 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 biking kind of really got into it again. The bike thing, yeah. And yeah. I didn't and 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 uh, you know, I was I was like a, I was like mountain biking, but it was much more uh single speed 29ers just trail ride kind of stuff for fitness uh -huh. is what I was yeah. doing. Yeah. And yeah. then just recently I you know, I thought, "Well, I wonder if I can get better at this at my age." And that's yeah. when I got the BMX bike and, you know, been working on 180s and 360s and stuff like that and 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 apparently you can get better like at any age which is also a big theme of the channel yeah 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 it wasn't one of your first videos like uh you were just trying to do some trick over and over and over again something i think that there was a there was a new year's video i did to invite people to use the comments to put down their goals for the year uh-huh and uh in that video i showed I don't know. I showed a bunch of attempts at something and I had no idea, you know, when you're young, it just doesn't seem like it takes as many attempts or you don't right. notice because you're, you know, what else are you going to do? You get off yeah. school and you just go spin the yeah. bike a bunch. Right. But, yeah, yeah. but, but as you're older, maybe you also just feel them more. I yeah. saw, I saw Danny McCaskill <laughs> post that it took him like 200 tries to jump onto this, this slack line in that gym video. And then it oh, took yeah, him yeah. four, 400 times to do that that palma thing that he did and yeah. uh and that was just an epiphany for me i thought well okay i was actually in hawaii and 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 i just had the bmx in the carport i'm like i'm gonna learn 180s i'm gonna learn to yeah. 180 my, my bmx i'm gonna give it 400 tries and if 400 yeah. tries i will reevaluate like if i haven't gotten yeah. there you know and then i don't know exactly what try because you, you lose count but probably you know, 387, right. <laughs> I got one, you know, whatever it was, yeah, but it yeah. takes a lot. It takes a lot of reps, but you can definitely you ever watch that channel. Mike Boyd. Have you ever seen that? I have. He he'll like decide to learn a thing, right? Yeah. 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 That I was have. pretty interesting. And it's like kind of along those same lines. And I always thought it was really like a, such a clever idea to actually just time the amount of time that it takes. Oh, it's, it's great. It's great. Yeah, And, and then you're and, like, and he doesn't do the reps. Like what I'd like to see is like, 
over the, you know, he was doing how to hop on the rear end of the bike uh -huh. recently. I, I don't know when that one was, but that's something that I've been working on because I got a trials bike. I'm like, okay, uh -huh. man, I learned some BMX stuff. Maybe I can learn some trials stuff. Right. And I saw his video, but, uh, but yeah, he's got a good approach, you know, and he, yeah. and he, and he gets it, he gets it done. Yeah. I remember seeing, I, I want to learn how to manual. I need to, I need to do it. And I, I'm like, not actually, and I'm not taking the time to actually try. So I'm, I have this like ridiculous idea that I'm just going to go down the trail one day and yank on my handlebars. I'm going to know how to do it. That's not going to happen. Like it the way it's going to happen is me actually trying to learn and yeah. like dedicating some time to it. And, um, I think th that's one of those things about his videos that I like when you look at it or when you're trying something and it seems so hard and then you watch him that's not a, you know, great rider or whatever. And he's like, I want to learn how to manual. And then he, yeah. it took him 20 hours, let's just say, to nail yeah. this, you know, 50 meter manual. And it's like, well, 20 hours doesn't seem that long, you know? Yeah. It, it doesn't. Yeah. You know, but if you break it down, I mean, that could be an hour a day for 20 yeah, days. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, I got to say, he's really good at learning. Yeah. You know? And like that 20 hour manual, you ain't going to do it in 20 hours. Yeah. Like, God bless you if you do. But yeah. a lot of this, a lot of the videos, I hope I'd never make one of these, like learn to do this in three days or get better yeah. at this in one day. Like, I think those do a great disservice to the community. Yeah. Because, because what if you don't, right? Now you have to feel bad about yourself or feel like you're right. lacking in some way. You know, right. these things take quite some time yeah. and manuals are crazy elusive. You know, yeah. him getting that, him getting that one manual, I'd like to, you know, see a manual around right yeah. now. Just like yeah. call him up, send us some manuals this evening. Yeah. Cause right. getting one on video during that period where you're doing a lot, it's right. a little different, you know, than like yeah. what maybe is going on. What sticks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, like I can manual the BMX bike. Okay. Not great. Yeah. Not as good as good as some of my friends or, or a lot of people, but, but okay. Enough that I'm like, it's a manual, you know, and you look yeah. at it and you're like, it's pretty cool. Right. Um, but on the big bike, you know, my manuals are not, well, they're, they're okay. They're okay. Like, yeah. I, and so, and so, that's how elusive the manual is though. You know, it's yeah. like the, the skill, even from one kind of bike to another kind of bike, um, yeah. you're going to need to put it, but here's what you do. If you want to learn to yeah. do it right. You could pretty much look at all the videos or any of the videos or none of the video. Now you should look at some, <laughs> you can look at the, the videos, but, um, but it's never the videos. It's always the time. Yeah. And I, I would say, if you did 20 minutes a day, if you could find 20 minutes, you know, yeah. at least, at least four days a week, 20 yeah. minutes and just sneak out and just do them uh -huh. that it will, that it will come. You will get it. Yeah. But that it was, was my but plan. It, that was my plan when I got the, uh, when I got the chameleon and, and I didn't never end up doing it. And so. It's hard. I think you have, you, you all, like, I don't know what your day looks like, but where do you yeah. find that 20 minutes? And then how do you like dedicate it? Yeah. And, and like in that 20 minutes, maybe it's 25 minutes, but, but break it up too. like, do, do five on one off five yeah. on one off five on that's going to be 24 minutes, but yeah, yeah. The, you really, it's really good to put in the, the digestion minute your brain will, will take on what you, what you've, what you've been practicing. And the other thing I'll say about manuals and wheelies or anything like that, when you don't, when you don't reach the balance point, don't keep, you will, you will get good at whatever you practice. So if mm -hmm. you practice the wrong thing, you get good at the wrong thing. Oh yeah. 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 Right? Don't, you want to do that. Yeah. And you can drill in that wrong thing and you're like, man, I have a, two second manual every time, you know, right. yeah. um, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> so, so I feel like if, if you, if you can get up towards the balance point and make sure uh -huh. that some of your, some of your manuals you're going, don't go so fast and make sure you're coming out the back of some of them. Yeah. That's better practice than just basically coming short on your manual and letting it down coming short on the manual and letting it yeah. letting it down coming short on that balance point right yeah then you just start to learn learn that yeah you yeah. got it though i'm, I'm yeah. excited we'll do a show in a year about your manual 
right? I hopefully in How a year that? I'm not filled. I, I'm very good at procrastinating and talking about doing something before I actually do it. So <laughs> that's not that's true. We can come back in a year and then I'll be like, oh god. Oh, <laughs> you're a young man. See, the yeah. other thing that happened to me, I think, and and like why why the channel or why more like why bikes and is um when my friend passed away the day that we were on the chairlift and, and I remember just really distinctly, he was like, he had this toe and he was saying, I got a hammer toe. I got hammer toe, Alex, mm -hmm. like been wearing flip-flops too much. Don't wear flip-flops. You'll get hammer toe. I don't even know what hammer toe is. Yeah, me neither. Maybe somebody in the comments will tell. <laughs> yeah. Toe. But I saw his toes. They look sort of hammer. -like. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, who cares? Like right. almost everything doesn't matter. Right? right. So make sure that like, it made me want to send a lot of stuff. It made me want to ride a lot more. It made me want to like, you know, keep improving. Cause for whatever reason, bikes give me a lot of joy. And yeah. so it really shifted me into this, like, why am I doing some, like I'm occasionally doing things that I don't like at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, specifically around marketing, you know, like I just, I I do some consulting here and there. I kept yeah. a toe in it and I did it really well for a long time and I don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. And, and, and like, I think sometimes in life we feel like there's this thread that we're trying to, well, you did this and now you have permission to do this because you did yeah. that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have permission to do a bike channel. Yeah. I'm an ad guy. Right. Or I'm yeah. a venture capital. Like the only permission is been in love with bikes my whole life it right. matters more to me than any more anything else for whatever reason it saved me and i owe it a yeah. debt i'm gonna do it yeah. and 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 it and it and I, and I stopped doing a lot of stuff that that i really disliked doing yeah i think that's um some pretty wise words there you know i think that's one of those things that i'm i'm at this point in my life right now it, it makes sense because i yeah. maybe lost the thread but like yeah. Who fucking cares about hammer toe or anything else that we worry about? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I've always told people from me being uh, from a young age, like just whatever you're passionate about, just go do, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I've always, always done that. You know, there was a point in my life where I wanted to be a rock star. So I was like in a band and like going mm -hmm. to school to be in the music industry some way. And then there was a point where I was in IT and that, that was like, you know, I love computers and all these things yeah. that I was doing. And, and now there's this point where I, I, I realize how much I love riding bike and how much it means to me and, and how much I want to be part of this community. And this is kind of where I'm focusing my energy. Yeah. On. It's similar to what you're saying, where it's like, I don't want to do these other things that are like, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm realizing the value of the time that we have on this planet. It's not much, you know, it, yeah. it can go away at any second. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, I, it, I thought I was really good at making those choices. Like I thought yeah. I always did things that I wanted to do, but, Yeah. but when I really looked at it hard, at least in the, you know, recently, there uh -huh. was some stuff I was doing that I didn't want to do. And it kind of surprised me, but it made me realize that, well, it made, for me, it made me feel like don't do a little of what you don't want to do right now. Mm -hmm. You know, try yeah, to just yeah. make this shift. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's good stuff, man. It definitely is. It's definitely a, a I don't know. I, I feel like when I was younger, I feel like my job defined me a lot. Like yeah. the level of success that I had, like I wanted to, you know, manage more people or more computers or bigger budgets or blah, 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 blah. And somewhere in my life, I just realized like, that shit doesn't really matter, man. Like I actually want to like value myself more on like who I am and, and like the good times that I've had and my buddies that I've helped out and like, you know, those, those type of things. Yeah. And um I feel like my life's been a lot more fulfilled since then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like or it's maybe weird I'm paying too because I think when you things. did when you did do it it did matter because yeah. it did matter. Like it's yeah. it's it's more that sometimes we get stuck with trying to make sense of our lives like this can this happened then this happened these things go together and of course I'm here now. But at least that's what happened to me where I was trying to yeah. have some th thread that 
that made sense in my life. And I, and I felt like maybe it was COVID, it was COVID, the death of my mother, the death of my friend, like yeah, it just all this stuff kind of, kind of made me feel like screw that. Like, right. You know, before I was an ad guy, I was a guy. I yeah. can be, you can be whatever you want. You don't have to have some through line, you right. know, Right, your, right. your life's not a script. Right. It just yeah. fires up every day. Like, and just whatever you spend yeah. your time on, that's going to be your life. Yeah. Yeah. And if you put enough time in anything, you're, you're, you're going to get good at it. I, I think <laughs> so. I think so. Like the channel has been really funny to watch that way, you know, because yeah. it, it, it reminds me of other things that I've dedicated some time to. Right. And then stuff starts to work. But then something feels really terrible and it doesn't work, you know, and right. it's not fulfilling. And then, you know, everything I've ever done has had those ups and downs. Yeah. And you know how easy it is to get discouraged. But, you know, if you've got a channel, if you've got anything, yeah. you've got an audience, whatever. It's like right. you, just the littlest thing. And it's like, well, I can't do this anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't um, tell you how many times in the time that I've had this channel like I have, this is all, this is my little studio set up out in the garage. We're always out here, me and my buddies drinking beers or whatever. And yeah, there's been plenty of nights, man. I sit out here just like, you know what? What the hell am I doing? Like whatever, something set me off that day. It's yeah, like, yeah. Dude, I ain't doing this anymore. But then, you know, the next day I'm like, oh, well, you know, there's ebbs and flows to everything. And, everything. You and know, it's, and, like it's always going to have some times where it's a grind, yeah. you know, like it is just always going to, everything's always done yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like things always end up working out. So it's kind of like, all right, well, got up today, you know, put my shoes back on and here we go. You do, know? Like what, it, what is your day job? I, I still do IT. So I'm a yeah. IT project manager basically. So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I still do venture capital stuff. So, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not a full time YouTuber yet. So, uh, you know, everybody listening right now signs up on all 74 people that are right now watching live. Yeah. Sign up on my Patreon for five bucks. I'm still not going to quit my job. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a ways to go before that happens. But, you know, I really, I really enjoy doing this. And that I think is the part that drives me, you know, is like how much enjoyment I get out of it. Yeah. And I know that they're like, when I got into it, I enjoyed it the same way that I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now, where right. I would be up at two o'clock in the morning, putting together some freaking server that did something that I had no need to do. I just wanted to learn how to do it, you know? And I'd be like chatting with these other guys that, that were the same way. And we'd be up, you know, five o'clock in the morning. Now it's like, shit, sun's coming up. Oh, we got it to work. And that was exciting. You right. know? Right. I put in a bunch of time to make me be successful in that career really quickly because I, you know, instead of having 10 years of working knowledge, I got it in a year or so because I was just, I was in it all the time. And, um, I feel like that's what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm, and when I'm, you, and when you do like, what's the, what's the plan for the, 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 is it the, what's the main focus? Is it the podcast or is it YouTube or where, where do you, it's, it's I think it's the brand together. So the podcast okay. and the POV channel, they're, they're, they're both biker. You know what I mean? Biker. So, yeah. Um, when I first started with just the biker channel, um, when the whole live streaming kind of thing came out, I'd come out in my garage and I'd be out here just like, I don't do well by myself. I don't like being by myself. So my, my lady, she travels a lot for work. She does marketing mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, she, um, she'd be gone. So I'd come out in the garage, grab a beer and I'd be like, Oh, just live stream. Just turn this damn thing on. And I'm just start talking to these people. And like, I would have these live streams that would be like three hours long, four hours yeah. long. People would be yeah. like, that was so much fun. And I'm like, I don't understand why it's fun. I'm just sitting in the garage, <laughs> drinking beer, talking shit to all you guys, you know? And after a while, I realized that, you know, hey, this is actually something that you're good at. Because I would be talking to these other, other friends of mine, they're YouTubers. And when they would live stream, it'd be like, they got this list of things that they're going to talk about. And they got like these props sitting here. So they're going to like pick up this part and do that. And they're going to do this and they have all this like schedule and regime and they're like 
you know, and they're nervous about it. And, I, and I'm like, here I am. I'm just walk out, like hit go and like pop open my beer. And then three hours later, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm tired of doing this now. You know, yeah. like, like, so for me, that's why the, how the biker bar podcast kind of came to be was that I realized that people really enjoyed it. I realized that I was good at it, but on the biker channel, when I was doing, I, cause I started doing this show on the biker channel as well. But then I had this problem with the analytics where I didn't know is somebody subscribing because they like watching me interview people or are they subscribing oh. because they like watching the POV stuff. Yeah. And I really felt like there was this, um, like I was kind of giving people a disservice, you know, cause they, they maybe weren't subscribed for that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I figured to myself, okay, well I'll separate them. And now, now I know. You know, like if you're subscribed right. to the podcast, you, you like this, you want to hear right. us chat for two hours, right? you know, and, and if the other people are subscribed to that one, they, they want to see me riding bikes and making fun of my friends and drinking beer or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, um, I, I think, but together though, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's a brand, it's a, it's a brand altogether, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. um, maybe one of them will toe the line more than the other. I, I would imagine it'll probably go back and forth. Yeah. You know, it's like, like we said, you know, everything has its ebbs and flows and who knows, maybe all of this channel, these two channels is just a learning experience for me to make a channel about something else completely different. Right. You know, I, I don't know. Well, I think the pond is kind of small, you know, cause, cause if, at least with the biker bar interviews, you're yeah. interviewing, you know, people with relatively small channels, myself included. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's like, you know, you get a subset of a subset. Yeah. It, right. And and yeah. so I, I've just been thinking like how to how to scale the biker bar. I haven't come up with anything. I'll definitely yeah. like, like yeah, hit yeah. you up with it if I have any epiphanies. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, it, it just continues. I mean, you, I interview, you know, companies as well. There's there's mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's a lot of, of places to go. And one of the reasons that this last year has been harder for me to get more companies on is because of COVID. Yeah. So I'm I I my best personality trait is my personality, right? So whenever I go to Sea Otter or, you know, Sedona Mountain Bike Festival, I can go talk to whoever's there at the booth. And now I have, you know, 20 different episodes set up because I've made friends with these different companies and mm. gotten contact information or whatever. Yeah. And, and COVID definitely stopped that from happening. Yeah. So the, what am I doing then? I'm like falling back on like, you know, cold calling people, which a lot of people, they don't give a shit, you know, well, no they, one, they, no one, no one needs to sell anything right now because right. everything's sold. So there's right, not right. any, any marketing through, through, right. Yeah. This kind of but, channel. But the plus side is the more interviews that I do, the more networking that I do. And then, you know, you, you get bigger and bigger names. And because mm -hmm. of that, that gives you, that validates you, mm -hmm. you know? And so it'll get to a point. I know it'll get to a point as long as I keep doing it. Where it'll be like, yeah, okay, Danny, Danny Maxkill or, you know, whoever the the big top pro rider is or like whenever, you know, X bike company wants to bring out their new bike, they're going to like want to get on here and talk because I have an audience mm -hmm. and an audience that'll listen for two hours. That is huge. You yeah. know, like yeah. to get somebody to listen to something that long. It's a long time. It's like a I long said, time, I thought man. I might need to take a potty break. Like, right. <laughs> But, but you, you, you see what I'm saying? And I feel like, um, that, that's, that to me between the two of the POV and, and the, the, the podcast, I feel like the podcast will eventually be the, the stronger portion, but yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to make that decision. I'm going to let it like, I'll let the numbers let figure it, it out for me. Let it happen. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I'm, I'm just making that assumption because of how easy it is for me to do. Right. I did what we don't do any live things. I haven't done. I did one. We gave away yeah. a we gave away a, a manual machine. Oh, right, um, right. And so we did that live, yeah. so that people could see that you know I could give out the names and stuff. There's a lot of comments that came in. I, I you know there were a bunch of people because we were giving something away. I think there was right. a lot of people like you know I want right. I want something. Um, but with the uh, do you ever read? Like, are the do comments come in? Can you see? I yeah, can't see them on my side. I don't see I have them on the screen that I'm looking at right now, so I'll watch them. Yeah. Sometimes I'll respond to people. Sometimes people, you know, 
throw some super chats and stuff like that. I appreciate that. Anybody wants to super chat me right now, go for it. <laughs> super chat. Yeah. Super chat's cool. Right. That seems but, like um, and, and if I see something that really grabs me, then I'll, I'll pull it up and put it on the screen. Like your buddy Lee was on earlier. And, uh, but oh, I don't want that stuff to get in the way of our conversation. You don't really you know? open it up to people. Yeah. 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 And, and so, I mean, if I see something that like, oh, that's a great question, or I was going to ask that anyway, you know, yeah. then, then yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. But I think it, for me, it's like, if you do too much of that, then the conversation becomes about like what, what the people are, are commenting on instead of the conversation, like what we had, I mean, we spent, you know, 10 minutes talking about jaws, which has nothing to do with mountain bikes or but does I, it, but, but it really, you know, lets people like, like into who you are and what your perspective is. And, and that is what pe people are interested in people. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so that's why they're listening for two hours because they want to they want to they want to understand are you, know? you are you a, a, a extrovert like you seem you were saying hey i'll go to this bike festival i'll talk to everybody like that's yeah. not me like yeah i'm i'm a little bit introverted i think yeah i'm definitely an extrovert um that's cool but uh i um i don't know you know I, I think that's just me i i when i grew up we were poor we moved all the time and because of that, I learned how to adapt to new situations all the yeah. time. The, make the moving friends. has got to be big. You got to know yeah. how to make friends. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but not everybody does, does it the same way. I mean, my, I have a little brother. He, he, he's exactly opposite of me. Yeah. You know, that didn't affect him the way that it affected me. Mm -hmm. and, or um, he's got different like coping mechanisms as yeah. an introvert. Like yeah. he may have just be, have a different setting. Yeah. 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 And, and who knows, who knows what it is, but I think that, I don't know where I was going to go with that, but it, what it made me think of though, is like, do what you're good at. And I know when I've been managing people, like a lot of times people, sometimes people don't know what, what they're good at. And mm -hmm. like, as a manager, a good, good thing to do is to like, put them in a role that they're actually going to succeed at. Right. You know? And, and that's one of those things when I, that I try to do when I'm self-reflecting. And when I'm self-reflecting, me coming out here in the garage and entertaining people by accident for a couple of hours tells me, dude, you must be good at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So keep doing that. Figure out yeah. how to do that more, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, do you do like I, I, I thought the the shows that you had um, people on were potentially more interesting than the shows with companies. Yeah. Because the com you know what I mean? Because the company yeah. you get a different like, I don't know. I guess I like it the most whenever I can get the person who is like the founder, like that, like that had Cali really on, good. like yeah. the guy that made Cali, like he's such a rad dude. That sounds you know, cool. yeah. So it's like it's like man, this is cool. Like like you walk away from that, you're like, I want to buy a Cali helmet because that dude is rad and he like really cares about. You could tell. Like he yeah. really cares about people, yeah. You know, and I, I, I mean, I don't mind. I thought you know, Cali. I, I've come to realize Cali's really cool stuff. The yeah. only time I would see Cali was at the it was at the bike park, you know, yeah. at, at, at Whistler or places yeah. like that. And I thought it was. Um, you, you ever forget your gloves when you're skiing, and there's a brand called Swanee, it, okay. and it's like you've never seen it at any ski store anywhere or <laughs> anywhere else. It's just right. for people who forgot things. Yeah. I thought I thought Cali was that of mountain biking. I thought it was like you know the brand for when you forgot your gear. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and it's not at all. It's like super hardcore and legit yeah. and cool yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're 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 legit, man. They're they're legit. They got these these dirt track like a pump like I don't know what what you call that like like a dirt jump line right in their office yeah, area. Yeah, it's got yeah. like a fifty foot drop in that you got to climb up some ladder, you know. And they like, oh you know, yeah, I think I saw Redactin on that. Yes, the other day, yeah, he right? was there just yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and in their warehouse, like they got like you know a half pipe set up for the guys that skate, and like you know, like somebody told me I was talking to a marketing person or something over there, and they I forget who the athlete was, but I think they were in like South Africa. This mm -hmm. guy was trying to do a loop to loop or something huge, and he came off, and the uh, the the he didn't die, and there was some story about how the locals wouldn't touch him or go near him afterwards because they thought there was bad magic. 
that oh, kept wow. him alive. Like they were okay. so freaked out that he was even alive that oh, they wow. kind of, they wouldn't help him. <laughs> yeah. It was something like that, like crazy. Yeah. Oh wow. And that's and, and you know it was sort of like this is how good the helmet is. Like the guy, yeah. you know, everyone yeah. watches. Like this guy should just be dead. And the Lord right. Can go near him, you know. And they're like, oh, you're a zombie. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Right. He's gonna eat your brains. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, there it's good stuff, man. And I think for me, um yeah, having founders is cool because they because they're yeah. not gonna be they won't feel hindered, like they won't yeah. feel like they can't say certain things, whereas employees are a little bit, you know, they're trying to navigate a yeah, yeah. Uh but either way, I mean, either way, it's cool, it's cool to get people on and and um talk about their products and like see who they are and and um I think you know. If they hire the right marketing people, then they're they're you know given the right vibe for the company, and you can tell that you know. Yeah. So, um, and I I don't know. At the end of the day, I, it's it's fun what I'm doing. It's fun you know talking to people, and and we'll see we'll see which way it goes, man. You know, yeah. it's been two hours, dude. How about that? Time's up. That's two, crazy, huh? Three, no, yeah, it's fast. It every fast. time, every time I tell somebody, and they're like, "Ooh, two hours," I'm always like, "I'm telling you right now." I'm going to, when we hit two hours, you're going to be like, holy crap, that was fast. Yeah. And I, I don't, like, I still don't even have to pee. Right. <laughs> we could have been drinking. We would have been yeah, okay. We been <laughs> I always like to ask people before they go, what other YouTube channels they watch, whether it's, you know, basket weaving or mountain biking. What, what do you like? What do you like watching? Um, I, I watched, I forget the guy's name, Rober, Mark Rober, Veritasi. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you see um, that autism thing that he did? I saw that it came out. I yeah. have a special needs kid myself. I haven't uh -huh. watched it because I, I really wanted to watch it. I feel like I probably I probably live live it enough that I yeah. come, you know. Um, but that was I thought it was beautiful that he did it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all. Um, yeah, his, his stuff's his stuff's really great. It's yeah, interesting it to try to take, you know, some of the thinking from channels like that 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 aren't um because i think the mountain bike channels are they kind of play in pretty narrow range yeah that can be expanded on yeah like you know you follow that guy bobo you ever yeah yeah, I do. Stuff? yeah I know him. have you had him on the channel yeah yeah he's been on yeah he he uh like his stuff is is entertainment right so it's yeah. actually the a different space maybe he does some tutorial stuff but i don't think so right it's all entertainment yeah, it's pretty much all mostly skits, but he, he does sometimes he'll do some POV stuff. But I, I don't know, at least my experience, like the skit stuff is what I'm. He I'm does a great like. job. It's very well scripted. I know from yeah. just making things that like those were hard to make, even though they're YouTube and simple yeah, yeah. and stuff. There's a yeah, lot of planning that goes into those things. They're very. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah but other than him, other than him, I feel like stuff is kind of like in a certain lane and there's, you know, it's kind of interesting to see where you can deviate from that i feel like there's yeah. a lot of space probably to deviate from that yeah and and, and you know i definitely want to explore more of the mental aspects of what we do yeah for sure my weight loss thing a lot of those videos are like real kind of like vloggy and mm -hmm. i've been trying to like think of how to bring more of that into back into like my my regular content mm -hmm. because i i enjoyed it because it's really it like what, is helped, like, what does vloggy mean? Like, I like, like just like talking to the camera, not okay. like so much Got like it. POV, like just writing, hey, here's this, you know, whatever. Like the vernacular so, stuff. Yeah, yeah more, like YouTube more vernacular. Like, right, right. So just yeah. more of, and that actually is when I first started my channel, I, I wanted to be more talking because I know, I knew that I'm good at talking, you know, so. Yeah. And I think somewhere, you know, you get influenced by other things that you see being successful. And I think at, at some points that I've, let that drag me in some directions at, at times that maybe weren't actually what I'm good at. Like, so let's just say me trying to do product review. Like I, I have very much cemented in my mind that I'm not good at product reviews. Mm -hmm. I don't like doing them. I'm not good at them. So stay away from that, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to think of, of kind of what you were saying, like kind of getting out of the lane a little bit, still mountain biking, but how but do I make, but draw your inspirations from outside of this category, yeah. right? Because yeah. I think I think that's smart. You know, I, we used to call it cooking in your own juices. Mm -hmm. um, when you get too much influence that's too close in, you don't yeah. ever develop a style, right? Yeah, yeah. And 
And you don't, you don't even need to decide to develop a style. Like right. it will happen. You know, yeah, you yeah. have no choice. Like there's yeah. just, you are you and you will do yeah, a certain yeah. thing. So if yeah. you let it happen, yeah. I've noticed just watching my own videos, I watch, there's like a, ch they're changing, you know, and I'm yeah. watching this thing happen for better yeah. or worse. It yeah. doesn't really matter because it is yeah. what it is. Um, yeah. That, that, uh, yeah, you got to, you got to be careful of the outside influences. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I want to be able to lay my head down and say that I was like, I am who I am. And I, yeah. and I stuck to that. And whether that keeps me like too many F bombs or whatever it is that makes me me, like, if that makes me successful, cool. And if it keeps me from being successful, but I'm having fun doing it, cool. Uh, you know, and just keep well, doing I'm, whatever I'm happy with. And yeah. until I'm not happy with it, when I'm not happy with it, then change or stop. You know, like, I think on this show, you're interviewing me, right? So it winds up being about me. But when, 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 you know, we're doing shows and thinking about shows, I'm looking up because I guess I'm thinking of the heavens or something. I'm like, right. that, that, that you, you try to just, it is, this sounds probably frou frou for something like a mountain bike channel, but, but there's so much posturing and there's so much BS that gets in the way and, you know, yeah. guys being guys or whatever, or, you know, yeah. like trying to be cool. And right. if you can just open a pathway and like, how am I going to get out as much truth right. as I can through this video? Yeah. That's what, that's what, you know, and it can be funny and it can be entertaining and stuff, but it's, but it's always like trying to turn yourself into just this, this uh this vessel right uh -huh. or conduit for yeah. something bigger that's trying to get through like then and it happens every now and then. i had it happen so good the other day we were like you know <laughs> shooting something and like i just flipped the camera around and it was like there were god rays in the sky and it felt <laughs> like it came it. out of this cloud and like then out of my mouth right? i could never have said it as well as i did just in that moment that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's almost like removing yourself. It's a lot of removing yourself yeah. and making sure that you're talking about you're talking about the person, about things that matter to them. Yeah. That's yeah. being a service, right? And yeah, then just right. finding that truth. Yeah. Right on, man. Dude, it's been awesome chatting with you. I was really looking forward to the conversation. Oh, good. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It, it, it was a lot of fun. It's it's always, you know. I like meeting new people kind of hearing their story and you're, you've, you've definitely had a good one to tell. I look forward to us talking more in the future for sure as well. Yeah, I, I would like that. Definitely. I would like that. Yeah. Keep doing definitely what you're like, doing. Really. Yeah. You too, it. man. Definitely. You've been, you've been killing it. And, uh, for those of you guys listening, you've been tuned in for the last two hours. Thank you very much. Sorry. I didn't always explain everything. Those of you guys that are listening with, uh, what hand signals Alex was throwing up, but I think you guys probably, probably carried along just fine. If you're, if you're, uh, still here and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, you should really do that. That would, that would, that would do me a, a big, a big favor and ring the bell, uh, right? Yeah. Ring the bell, man. Ring the bell. <laughs> hit the thumbs up button. If you want to hit the thumbs down button, feel free to do it twice. That's the only way you can do it, though. You got to hit two <laughs> times. No, I mean, you got to really not like it. So hit it two times and then you're good. So, oh, that's good. Outside of that, if you guys want to get some, some extra content, go over to Instagram and go over to Facebook, whichever one you use. Um, you can actually go to Twitter, too, but I think that's pointless because all it is is a link back to Instagram, right? So... Um, go ahead and follow me over there. You get some, some extra stuff, kind of find out what's going on. Maybe I'll be sneaking in the uh, new bike frame that I picked up yesterday. You guys will find out about that maybe. Mm -hmm. Or if you really want the inside scoop, you gotta go on Patreon. I talked about it at the beginning, talk about it again. You guys are really the ones that are financing this, this show, man. You're, you're buying the microphones, you're buying the, the neon lights in the background and all the beer and whatever else that fuels this thing. But, um, at the end of the day, there's one thing that's really important and I think you guys all know what it is. It only takes a bike to be a biker. So get and be one. <laughs>